Welcome to Nimmin Live, the number one place on the internet to learn about YouTube, network with other content creators, and have an awesome time doing it. My name is Nick, and today we are answering your YouTube questions. And when I say we, I mean myself and my brother from the same mother, D. D, what's going on? First stream of 2024. Boom. Here we go. We made it. Here we go. We did. We made it. Yep, we did. Well, happy New Year's, everybody. Yeah, happy New Year's. Hope you had a fantastic holiday. Hope that you are excited to get going here in 2024 you're probably going already you know because with new year's resolutions right. and you know that sort of thing Hold yeah on. it's probably uh Type pretty exciting okay. i'm I, i'm not into new year's resolutions yeah, I'm not either. but i know a lot of people are mm -hmm. if you had a new year's resolution type it in the chat right now yeah maybe it was like i'm going to finally start my youtube channel yep. maybe it was i'm going to become consistent on youtube yep. i'm going to reach out to my first sponsor uh -huh. i'm going to start going to the gym i'm going to yep. cut out sugar yep Gone. i'm going to i'm going to i'm going to go out for milk and never come home yeah like whatever your new year's resolution was type it in the chat right now <laughs> i'm gonna go out for milk and never come home what a, what a great thing to add to that list right? hey man Just, people, uh, yeah people have listen, goals you got right? goals yeah people have goals they have visions and whatever those visions are you know we wish you the best with achieving yeah, those, man. Just those listen, visions 2024 <laughs> you do whatever uh, you want oh it's great so with that said, um, uh, if this is your first time here, uh, what we're doing is we're answering your YouTube questions. So for those of you that are participating live, we've got a form down in the description where you can get your question in there and you can get it answered for free here on the stream. So any questions that you have about YouTube, anything you're struggling with, anything like that, put your uh, question down in that form because that's what we're here for to help you navigate some of that stuff. If you are watching this on the replay um, or listening to it on the replay, I do wanna let you know that on YouTube, we are uh, we add timestamps to this. So those timestamps make it easy to find the very specific answers to questions that you might have as well. I encourage you to sit back and just listen to it or sit back and watch it because this stream Content creators ask tons of different questions and you might have something that somebody asks that you think to yourself, huh, you know what, I never really thought about that, but wow, you know, I'm super glad that that person asked that question. So because of that, I encourage you to, you know, to sit back and listen to it, but if not, that's fine. You can skip around um, as well. But besides that, I do wanna let you know that this stream is brought to you by TubeBuddy, which is the number one tool for YouTube content creators. TubeBuddy will help you optimize your videos for discovery. TubeBuddy will help you test your thumbnails to make sure that the thumbnails that you're making are effective for the people that you're trying to reach and the traffic sources that you're trying to get attention from. So for example, YouTube has their A-B testing tool that they're rolling out, which is great. You should definitely use it. But if you're being strategic and you're trying to get into YouTube search as an example, then in that particular case, when you use TubeBuddy, it's gonna give you a report letting you know how people responded when they clicked on your thumbnails as well, besides just showing the watch time for the recommendation system. So depending on what you're doing, um, that's an amazing tool. In addition to that, they have tons of different workflow tools, over 90 different tools on TubeBuddy that will help you in a bunch of different ways with your channel. And one of those that is something that a lot of people don't really think about or don't know about is you can quickly add translations to your titles, to your descriptions, and to your captions using TubeBuddy as well. So make sure you check that out at tubebuddy.com slash nim. And of course, you can see the link right here on the screen. And besides TubeBuddy, this stream is co-brought to you by StreamYard. StreamYard is the live streaming platform that we use to stream this every single Saturday at 9 a.m. Eastern. And the reason that we use StreamYard is because it's easy. Um, it's easy to bring guests on. It's easy to add graphics to the screen. It's easy to play background music if you choose to. Um, it's easy to, uh, you can even hook up multiple USB cameras to your computer and use StreamYard with that. Ready? Um, they've got 4K now. They've got 4K coming. 4K coming now. 4K is on the way. It's yeah, on 4, the way. 4K is going to be coming out this year, which is awesome. <laughs> and super exciting got a little ahead of myself yeah a little, hey 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 it's 2020 for 20 let's get excited yes <laughs> Yeah, man. <laughs> so yes. with all of that, um, you can try StreamYard for yourself. Oh, and it's uh, it'll hold your stream open too. This is a really important part about StreamYard. So when you're using other services, like, you know, let's say OBS, for example, which a lot of streamers use. Which when is you're, great. When, it is, it's good. When you're using OBS, um, sometimes your computer will have a problem and it'll crash and things like that. So one of the amazing things about StreamYard is it will hold your stream open for you while you're getting your computer back on or while your power's coming back on or your electric's coming back on. So you don't have to restart your whole stream, which is great. But you can try StreamYard for yourself and see all the different things that you can do with it at StreamYard.com. And of course, I've got a link to that down in the description, as well as a bunch of other helpful tools and resources for you down in the description as well that will help you in a bunch of different ways. So make sure that you check those out. With all that stuff out of the way, D, uh, you excited for 2024? Uh, yeah. 
Me yeah. too. You know, at my age, I'm just like you're like, hey, made it another one. I made it another one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's good. Yeah, me too, man. I'm 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 excited to just see what happens. You know, this year, I'm excited because you know every year there's people that come in, they start YouTube channels, and then you know at the end of that year, some of those people aren't there. Some of those people are, and they're doing great. So I'm excited to kind of see who makes it through the gauntlet, you know, so to speak, uh, so to speak, this year, and and hopefully, it's going to be you. So I had, as, as you are well aware of, and some of you are aware of, I took a long hiatus. Yeah, still taking a long hiatus of still sorts. Take, still yeah. taking a long hiatus. I did a couple live streams, and I, I uploaded sure. some shorts You're still doing the thing. I, I mean, you're yeah. here every Saturday. But uh, in terms of my, uh, my own channel, I, I mm-hmm. kind of took a hiatus on that. And I have a, and it's, it's not a resolution. I've just kind of been building up to it. So I mm-hmm. kind of have a new uh, level of excitement to, to get uploading again. Mm-hmm. So I'm kind of fired up about yeah, that's that. That's good. That's good. Yeah, yeah, super excited. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So uh, with that out of the way, just a reminder, we do have that form down in the description. So um, we've already got some questions in there, but if you want to get your question answered on the stream today, if you get in there now, it will get answered because we don't have tons and tons in there. And um, as we get into that, you know, just really quick, I just want to give a shout out to Creator Classroom. What's going on? I hope that you're doing great. Shark Scrapper, nice to see you in here. Chantel Hills, hope you're doing great. Jerry Popandrew, my dude, hope that you are doing fantastic. I'm going to be catching up with you soon, by the way. Doug Houston in the house, Zach Talks Tech, hope that you're doing great. Um, I'm going to be scheduling that with you. Uh, this coming week as well. Um, just, you know, what's going on to everybody? Hope that everybody's doing great, ready to learn. One thing that I do recommend is that, uh, you know, if you are a new content creator specifically, and if this is your first time here, especially, make sure you get out like a notepad and just have something next to you that you can, you know, quickly take notes on. If you are a Tube Spanner user, of course, Tube Spanner has the uh, notepad tool where you can go ahead and, you know, start, uh, you know, jotting notes into that as well as part of their browser extension. So make sure that you check that out. But when it comes to, uh, you know, the information shared here, you know, based on the feedback that I get, a lot of people get a lot of, you know, nuanced tips and a lot of nuanced information where they're like, oh, yeah, I never really thought of that detail. So because of that, just have something by you that you can kind of jot, you know, everything down with if we happen to talk about anything that you're like, oh, that's that, that's good. Or if you're just like well, drawing gonna... funny faces of us, you know, whatever, you know, you can do that too. We will discuss something where they say that's good. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. yeah. Hopefully. Good we'll shit. see. We'll see. Guaranteed. Yeah. I, it will probably come from this side of. Probably. Yeah. The o- over there. Yeah. Like if there was a line the, here. Right. Yeah. Then it would be on the line where like R2D2 is. Good stuff. Right. Yeah. All of the good stuff is said from, from over From R2D2 here. over that way. That's right. Okay. Yeah. Good. Good. That's right. Now so, yeah, that so, that's settled. Yeah. Hey, so now it's settled. Let's get into it. Hold on. The first super chat. Of the year. Of the year. Super chat. Love it. Zach Talks Tech. Thank you, my man. Super appreciate it. It says, happy new year, guys. My content goals include continue streaming five times a week. I've got the consistency down, making at least one of those streams into a podcast and build my threads and socials. Absolutely love it. Got to watch or love watching, uh, watching, seeing you. (laughs) Love watching you do it. Gonna love watching you do I it. I told here. you. I was you like, did. dude, two margaritas too much, and I you're know. gonna struggle through the stream. Right, right, right. Don't That's do a it. joke. I don't uh yeah. Anyway, Ernesto YT it's says uh they do say. daily content. They've been on YouTube for less than a year. They do they hey, do the type of channel is gaming and entertainment. Before we get into the questions, um, okay. so Zach's talking about building threads. I'm assuming he means Instagram threads. Yeah, he's not Facebook sewing, threads. I don't think. He might be sewing, but, yeah. but I don't think so. So my, my question is, for everyone in the, in the chat, how do you feel about threads? Mm. I, I downloaded the app. I created the account, and I've never used it since. Yeah. What, what Everybody used it for a couple of days, um, and it then was, it kind of yeah. faded away. But, but people are still growing. People are using Major it. accounts there. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. It's just another, it's another place, right? Insta threads. Yeah, yeah I just... Uh, I, I couldn't get into it. No, I'm at the stage now with social media where I just can't stomach trying it. to do less than, yeah, yeah. instead of trying yes. to do more. I'm yeah. trying to do less instead of trying to do more. Yeah. And I'm just, when it's like, oh, there's this new thing you have to download. No. I just want to vomit on myself. Yeah, it's like, yeah, I'll download it, get the name. Yeah. But then I'm not going to use it probably. I want to yeah. secure my name mm-hmm. so somebody doesn't pretend mm-hmm. to be me. Right. And then try to scam people out of like Bitcoin or something. There goes my plan. Yeah. <laughs> Foil- oh, there, goes, there goes my income source. Yeah. Foiled Great. again. Thanks, D. Yes. So um, Ernesto YT is our uh, is our first question of the new year. As a matter of fact, first question. Yep. Here we go. Uh, the be goal good. of the channel. If it's not good, you'd skip on to the next. The one. goal of the channel. If if it's not good, we're just shutting everything down and walking out. No, the, I'm just kidding. It's all on you, Ernesto. <laughs> Ernesto, no, I'm just bring it, buddy. <laughs> bring it. So the goal of the channel is to reach 90 subscribers, and the question is, how do trending videos happen? So when it comes to trending videos, um, all of that happens based on response. So 
when you are publishing videos to YouTube, your videos are gonna live and die by, by how people respond to them. And by response, I simply mean how often are people clicking on them compared to how often they're being showed. Once they click on them, how far are they watching? Once they watch uh, the video in its entirety, what are they doing next? Those types of things. So when it comes to viral videos, they're usually you know very broad in topic and very broad in audience, I should say. Um, and uh, with that, they're very high response videos. Sometimes it's music videos, you know, things like that, where they also have big followings already and they can kind of juice them that way because they have that following. Like, let's say, for example, if uh, Eminem put something out right now, there's probably a good chance that he would, uh, you know, have a trending video if he did, right? Because he's Eminem. So you have that kind of stuff too. But when it comes to uh, trending videos, it just comes down to how people respond to it. And, you know, the more broad audience it is, um, the better the chance, you know, of the video going viral. Because if you're super niche, then you're just serving, you know, a very specific community. So if you're going to be trying to go like viral, viral, and, you know, be on like the trending page, then in that case, it needs to be, you know, content that's open up for a much larger audience that usually doesn't fit into, you know, a, a small niche type of thing. Good question, though. Broad audience is what mm -hmm. he's trying to say. Yep. Next up, we've got hey. the Dream Builder 21. And really quick, Alex super Gear chat. in Tech, thanks super for the super chat. chat, says, as I approach 100,000 subscribers on my main channel and 60,000 on my second, I'd like to say a big thank you to you, Nick, for your help in this journey. High five and fist bump, high five and fist bump to you. Um, Alex Gear in Tech, nice work on the 100,000 subscribers on your main channel and 60,000 on your second channel. It's great, man. You're crushing it. Nice work. Absolutely love that. Love it. Dream Builder 21. I've, I've seen better. <laughs> Dream Builder 21 has been on YouTube less than a year. They do automotive content. The goal of the channel is to entertain people with my projects and distract them from their day and to turn my model car collection into the real thing. The question is, what's the process like when you get your first sponsorship? I saw your video that explains everything, but I want a little more detail on um, on the aspect. So when it comes to... That's a good question. It is a great question. So when it comes to your first um, sponsorship deal, what that's going to look like is if you're doing outreach and you're trying to you know make those deals happen, then in that case, you know, you're going to get somebody that's going to bite on the outreach and you're going to start the conversation on exactly what it is that they are going to want from that collaboration. Um, you are also going to be presenting them, you know, an idea of some kind that's going to happen either through email or you're going to hop on a call. Um, one thing that I've found is if you hop on calls, then you can usually work out, you know, much better arrangements and you can really get into the details of what somebody's actually trying to accomplish. Because when content creators doing brand deals, a lot of times people are thinking about, you know, themselves and, you know, how everything works out for them. But what you should be thinking about if you want to continue, you know, getting, uh, you know, good brand deals and, and have long relationships with companies over time is thinking like, okay, my channel is a resource and it's, I have people interacting with this channel and this company is wanting to work with me to get their product in front of my audience in some capacity. It could be to where they're trying to get direct link clicks that will take people to their website. Um, it could be to where they are just trying to spread awareness about their brand or a specific product that they have. So just figuring out exactly what it is that they're trying to do um, is extremely important. So if you can hop on a call, if you're comfortable with that, then I highly recommend that. And when you do it, all you have to do is just start with the approach like, okay, um, you know, so I'm really excited to hop on the call with you. Um, I wanted to hop on this call real quick and, um, you know, figure out since we're going to be, you know, working together, or hopefully working together. Um, I wanted to figure out how we could both get the most out of this, you know, this situation that we're getting ready to walk into. And by doing that, then they are also going to start talking about, you know, what they would like to see, what they would like to do, how they would like their products to be presented those sorts of things. And then you can also let them know additional details. So a lot of times content creators will have their YouTube channels. They'll also have maybe a Twitter account or an Instagram account. Some people have TikTok accounts or, you know, big followings elsewhere, Facebook groups, or all kinds of different stuff, Discord, you know, communities. And all of those things are valuable to people that are trying to spread awareness about their products and services. So when you let people know that you have those types of things and you can start brainstorming with them. So then it's not all you just presenting everything, start brainstorming like, hey, I've also got this is there any way that you know that we could also get you into this thing and by doing that you know it, it it becomes a collaborative process and then from there you make you know whatever agreements that you're gonna make verbally there and then um, either you will provide them with a contract but in most cases they're gonna provide you with one then you agree to it or you'll haggle back and forth over the details of the contract um, and then once everything is signed up and good to go then you start delivering on your side of the arrangement there and um, in some cases people will pay up front and other pay, in other cases, people will pay you immediately after the video has been published. In other cases, people will pay you with a little bit of a delay after the video 
has been published maybe 30 days or something like that. So, um, so yeah, that's pretty much the uh, pretty much the process. So hopefully that uh, hopefully that helped. Next up. So we've got a super chat here. Norskit Turkey. Um, I apologize if I'm saying that wrong. Says, um, if you could, please review this account. So we don't review YouTube channels during the stream at this moment in time. It is something that we're going to be doing kind of here and there in the future. But at this moment in time, that's not something that we are doing I, uh, during these live streams. Yeah. So while he was speaking, I actually gave your your channel a glance. But oh, I'm not fantastic. Pull it up. But I'll say this. Uh, just looking at your channel at a glance, I don't know what your channel is about. Mm. I don't know what your channel is about, and it seems like you just have a mix of content with titles that don't really make a whole lot of sense. So I would say focus. Think about what type of channel you want to be and the type of audience that you're trying to reach and start writing titles that might be more attractive to that particular audience. Because as I'm looking at your channel, not sure what to look at, not sure what you're trying to do on the channel. Seems like you just threw a bunch of stuff up on the wall to see what sticks. And if you're new, that's fine. Yeah. Uh, but if you're trying to get stuff focused down, pick something that you're really interested in that your audience is responding to and, and lean into that. Boom. And really quick, Shark Scrapper says, that's awesome advice for any relationship, business or personal. How can both parties benefit from the relationship? Absolutely. You know, and that's another thing too, just really quick back on the brand thing is it's also important to know, like, yes, they're, you know, they are, uh, rep, you know, the people that you're talking to, they are representing a company, but those people that you're talking to, you know, they're, they're people, you know, just like you are. And, you know, it's like content creators are um, sometimes, you know, some people are, are intimidated because they're getting on a call and they have this opportunity to, you know, possibly have a very nice, you know, relationship that generates a lot of income for them with these companies. But at the end of the day, you know, you're just talking to another person, right? You can hop on there and you can talk to them just like you talk to your friends, of course, try to be, you know, polite, you know, those types of things. But like, uh, you know, it's, it's just developing those relationships um, is, is great. And, and hopping on calls is a fantastic way to do that. Because then they can see like, okay, yeah, they're, they're trying to figure out what, we're looking for how we're going to actually track this you know what the best things are uh, you know what our opinions are and how we would like our stuff presented that type of stuff so yeah definitely do that tube spanner in the house thank you for the super chat says super chat. this week i wrote a joke about chemistry but i'm not sure if it will get a reaction boom <laughs> not youtube related though not youtube related so uh so yeah i don't know if that yeah i don't know if that one qualifies as a good first joke of the year uh tube spanner yeah you danielle you uh yeah you got to work on that one <laughs> you had one so, shot to come in swing and come and swing hard for yep, to start the new year off right one yeah. shot there yeah. went <laughs> so uh next up came in here like heisenberg right? talking about chemistry which you missed <laughs> uh l88pex says uh they have been on youtube for one year or more they have an automatic Automotive channel the goal of the channel is to be the destination channel for automotive content i love it i, I do too the question that, is that's key to be the, the destination, destination channel love it for automotive content yeah i would love to see there first of all i love that hmm. but what type of automotive content yep. are you focusing on a particular type of car yep. add that in there details matter and, and the question is what is the best way to video conference with someone both for long form videos and live streams that is to get their video and audio for either later editing or to insert it into a live stream so this software that we're using right now for this live stream it's called Streamyard. and with that one of the things that's cool there is you can basically have that video conference and uh you don't have to be live streaming you can just record it but they have technology to where uh if you choose to select that technology because it's a checkbox to where it will record everything on the the guests end and it will record it on your end as well and then when it's finished it basically puts everything together and then you end up with high quality from both sides which is great so yeah streamyard would be the uh, would be the answer for that next up and it's really easy to <laughs> danielle says someone called 9 11 i'm down <laughs> Oh, that's great. <laughs> so next up, we've got uh, Aaron's House of Legos. Aaron's House of Legos says they do Lego content. The goal is to share my Lego knowledge with the Lego community and to bring something new to the Lego space. Question. Hey, Nick, been following your advice and tips for a while now, and I'm happy to say that I just hit a thousand a month ago, a thousand subscribers a month ago. Any tips go. you got for a person with that many subs? Absolutely. Keep going. So uh, first off, congratulations to you. High five and fist bump for that first 1,000 subscribers on your channel. Love seeing that. Um, when it comes to the 
um, tips for you, you know, once you've crossed that milestone, one thing I would definitely do is I would go and I would look through your content and I would see the content that has generated subscribers, the content has generated views, the content that's generated the most watch time, content that had the best audience retention, you know, those types of things, content that got the most comments, content that got the most likes, all of it, and then start looking for similarities between all of those different pieces of content and start looking for things like, okay, when I, when I do this in my videos, it seems that people are watching them for a longer period of time when I do this not so much. It seems like when I talk about these topics around Lego that people will respond to those better. It seems like when I put these types of things in my thumbnails, people seem to, you know, click on those more, those types of things. Um, and then that way that will help you get a good handle on what the people that you are, uh, you know, making content for, um, what they respond to, which is great. Um, in addition to that, YouTube has a grouping feature inside of your YouTube analytics. So you can also go in, like, let's say, for example, you make, uh, some Lego builds that you do are about structures and then other Lego builds that you do are about vehicles and then other ones are you know like character people and like that kind of stuff then what you can do is you can use the grouping feature to actually put like hey these are all my structures like you know castles and that kind of stuff and these are all my cars these are all the people or however you you know with all the different stuff that you make you categorize it that way in the grouping feature and then you can actually start comparing them against each other's content sets as well and then you can start also fine-tuning your understanding there of what people respond to the most and then make future content decisions based on on that so there is an app for the life of me i don't remember what it's called have you seen the app where you can take a picture of a pile of legos on the ground and it will show you all well, first of all it identifies all the bricks and it will show you everything that you can build with that oh my goodness no right. and it, you're right so it'll be like okay that's here's, incredible here's a pile of legos and you can take a picture of it with the with the app and then the ai will scan all the bricks and then it will give you step-by-step -step instructions to build everything that it thinks you can build with that pile of bricks wow absolutely bonkers yeah that's incredible oh absolutely bonkers yeah, i want to address this really quick here um uh, philip murphy says Problem is with the Google form, that's a lot of information just to ask, how are you? And a super chat just to say, how are you seems greedy. Okay, that would have been a great place just to say, hey guys, how are you? Because I noticed it. Instead, right. you posted that. Right. So, you know, just, just letting you know how things work. Yeah, like when it comes to that kind of stuff, like the, uh, <laughs> you know, when you say, how are you just in the chat, that's kind of what that's for. And then the forum itself is more for very specific questions that you might have about your YouTube channel. Um, and then the super chats, those are just when uh, like we had, you know, um, just a little Super bit ago track. where, you know, uh, people will come in and say, you know, that they cross milestones like Alex did, um, you know, where they cross milestones and things like that. That's what that kind of stuff is for. Super chat. Just put it up on the screen. Um, let's see here. Let me scroll up. So team, uh, Tim tech Wiz says, I am a tech person. I post shorts, but I am not view. So I'm guessing that you're saying there that you are not, not getting, getting views. views. So if you're not getting views on your shorts, um, first, thing that you need to do is go and look to see if you are getting any impressions on your shorts. Um, if you are, then that means that YouTube is, you know, showing your shorts to people, but they're swiping away. Also look for, you know, the swipes because you can see that information as well. Um, but if you are not getting any activity like zero, then that's going to come down to possibly a bug of some kind. But if you are, um, yeah, you're getting 46 views, 24 views, 28 views, 14 views. So you're getting views, but you're not blowing up, right? You're not getting tons and tons of views, which is probably what you're trying to really solve. So keep in mind, you know, you, like this particular one is you are just doing like a speed test on something and it's a, you know, relatively short video. So you got to think to yourself, like if this shows up in front of, you know, just general people, how, you know, uh, how exciting is it going to be for them or how interesting is it for them to see, you know, those particular speed tests, right? And just thinking about you know that kind of stuff yeah there's other things too so if you're only doing exactly what he said you got to provide value to the viewer but you're also narrowing your audience here because you're focusing on at&t so if i don't have at&t and i'm not interested in disqualified yeah, with, if you don't have at&t it right, doesn't matter so, right so yeah. if i don't have at&t and your short shows up in front of me guess what? I'm not interested. I'm swiping away. Right. And this is a lesson also just for everybody. So when it comes to, I was just having this conversation with my friend today with Paul, you don't have any friends. So, <laughs> so you have, oh you God, have, oh, you have yeah, hangers on, meltdown, right? you have hangers on <laughs> who are hoping that you'll, you'll give them a shout out. That's all you have. <laughs> so, so, uh, one of the things to think about when you are writing titles for your videos, 
is you can take a couple of different approaches. One is if you are targeting a very specific audience, then in that particular case, you can put what I call audience identifiers in there. Um, a very clear and explicit version of this is like, for example, if you're trying to reach uh, like single, you know, moms or single dads, then in that case, it would be like, you know, topic of the video for dads, right? So then you just make it crystal clear who it's for so you get the right people clicking on it. So you can do that kind of thing. But you also got to think about it from the other end. Like, what am I, what am I putting in my thumbnail or what am I putting in my title that could cause people to not click on it or cause people to be confused on it or to cause people to be interested or need to be interested in multiple things in order for this content to make sense for them to click on. So for example, um, you know, uh, like when people do podcasts and then they repurpose those podcasts or when they just put them up on YouTube or wherever, one of the things that will happen is they will optimize the entire show around the guest, right? So when it comes to optimizing the show around the guest, if that guest isn't super, super popular and that's what it's optimized around, then they're creating walls, right? They're create, they're making it difficult for people to be able to consume the content. But if they remove those obstacles and instead of uh, focusing the whole thing around the guest and instead they focus it around a topic that they talk about with the guest, then they're optimizing for the topic, which then makes the content more accessible and more interesting to more people. So when you are writing your titles, even when you're putting your thumbnails together, in addition to thinking, okay, how's this gonna uh, help the people that I'm trying to reach identify this as something that they care about, exactly what about this title is gonna compel somebody that I'm trying to reach to click on this? Also think about it the other way. Is there anything that I'm doing here that might cause somebody to need to know something extra or to where they're going to be just immediately disqualified there um, because they're not interested in the thing, like these example there on Tim's channel, where they are, you know, just focusing on AT and T, for example. If it's a Verizon user, they're not going to care about that video because they're not an AT and T user, right? So just making sure that you're thinking about those things and and getting out of your own way, essentially, when it comes to uh, writing titles and basically packaging your content up. Yes, and postcards. How you doing, man? I just replied to your email today. I don't know if you got it yet or not. Boom. Brian, how we got here, Genealogy, says, um, hope you guys had a great holiday break. D, I think I found your YouTube 100,000 award at a pawn shop. Oh, that would be hilarious. <laughs> I'm out there I'm out there selling it. I'm like, oh, hey, I can get a few bucks for this. The crazy Instead thing, of giving it to D, let me go to a pawn shop. The cra that, That's exactly something. That is, that is something that I is do. That is exactly yeah. something. And I'd be like, hey, dude, I got 100 bucks for your play button. Yeah. Yeah. Let me take you to dinner. <laughs> And at dinner, I'm like, oh yeah, hey dude, yeah. Oh, by the way, this is paid for by your, yeah. your play button. Right. You just yeah. like take the whole crew out to dinner, and you're like, no, no, no I got this. I'm like, you sure? Like, yeah, yeah. I sold your play button. It's good. <laughs> That's exactly something that you would do. Oh, love it. And the funny thing is, is my play button is out there circulating somewhere. Yeah, somewhere. Yeah, it's out there. Someone yeah. found it. Yeah. It could be somebody. Uh, uh, you know. Uh, uh, okay, so we're in Thailand, mm -hmm. and they kind of have like their own, <laughs> like a human recycling system here mm -hmm. so when you put garbage outside or there's you know various piles of garbage at nighttime people will come through and they'll very respectfully go through your garbage and mm -hmm. they'll separate the glass and they'll mm -hmm. take the cardboard and they'll take the plastic and they separate all that stuff and they'll take it and because they can sell it yep right so they're kind of they're scavengers i guess is a way to put it there they're scavenging they're recyclers they're recyclers yeah scavengers slash recyclers yeah scrappers and, i scrappers. guess would kind of be okay yeah, there you yeah, go scrappers yeah. scrappers yeah apologies all you scrappers out there yep. scavengers you're all the same to me <laughs> <laughs> paint you all with one brush but so they're going through all the garbage so somebody found that somewhere in a box or in the trash or wherever you may have left it behind mm -hmm. and that's not something that they would throw away here yeah so somewhere in thailand there is some scrapper yeah. That has a YouTube play button that has against... tried to like turn it in for like metal or like yeah, whatever yeah, yeah. they thought it was made yeah, out yeah. of. Yeah, and it's just sitting up against the wall somewhere collecting dust, and it probably has spiders crawling. Probably, on it. yeah, probably. That that's my play button. Thank you. Yeah, hey, no problem. Yeah. Learn Spanish world. What's going on? Hope you're doing great. Hey. So next up, we got her heel review. Uh, they upload one time per week or more. They do movie reviews. The goal of the channel is growth and monetization, plus to build a side career as a film critic. And the question is. How do you find the best time to post your channel? Also, how do you research what topics people are looking for that might show up on their watch page? Okay, so when you are trying to figure out the best uh, uh, the best time to post your videos, there's a couple of factors here that I want you to think about. The very first is that um, the 
time that you publish doesn't necessarily impact long-term video performance, does it? But it does uh, impact initial video performance. So because of that, you know, trying to post at the right times when your viewers are online or as they're coming online is the idea. So what you want to do is if you go into your audience tab in your YouTube analytics, YouTube is going to show you the times that your viewers are online. I've got a video coming out Monday about this, and I actually show you specifically the whole video is about things that you should be uh, focused on this year as a content creator. And one of those things is, you know, understanding that side of things and understanding your analytics in general. And I go into details on what you need to be looking at. But one of those things is the audience tab. And within that audience tab, um, they show a very, uh, it, it's, a, it's a chart and it shows when the people that are interacting with your content are typically online. So then you can say, okay, well, if I'm going to publish a video, let me do it as they're coming online so that I can ride the wave, so to speak. And then if you're a live streamer, then that becomes even more important because of course you want to live stream and your viewers are online. So because of that, you need to also make sure that you are looking at that same graph if you are a live streamer as well, because then when you go live, when your viewers are online, then you have a higher likelihood of people coming in and hanging out in your live stream. Channel member, Creator Classroom. Creator Classroom, welcome back to the uh, channel membership. I'm gonna play this song. Yeah, do it. Welcome to the Nimanati. Yep. We need a welcome back to the Nimanati. Oh yeah, we do. Yeah. Yeah, we have to hit up uh, Travis. Travis. Yeah. 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 So Tim Tequis says, um, I also need to understand my analytics. So here's the thing, you know, um, keep in mind, you know, for everybody here, like if you're just getting started on YouTube, like um, when it comes to these types of things and when you hear us talking about these things in the stream, um, there's a ton of different things that you have to learn. But, you know, just learn like as you go along. Right. Because, you know, like when it comes to analytics, for example, like it's pretty complicated, like the video that I have oh, coming out. She's never been a member. Oh, I thought she has. No. Oh, OK. OK. Oh, OK. Well, welcome, welcome. to the Nimanati then. Yeah, welcome. Yeah, it's about time for yeah. crying out loud. Yeah, where the hell have you been? <laughs> but uh, uh, but when it comes to, uh, you know, just all the different things that we have to learn, just learn at your pace, right? Do the thing. And then um, when it comes to the analytics, that video that I'm getting ready to put out, I'm going to show you exactly what it is that you need to focus on because there's tons of stuff and you can go really deep in there. And over time, you know, you should learn those things. But, you know, you should at the very least learn the basics. One of the cool things that YouTube is doing right now um, is they are trying to make all of that a lot easier for everybody to understand because it can get complicated. And as I'm sure you see in your, uh, you know, in your creator studio already, they're telling you, hey, this video is performing like this because of these reasons, right? Which is really cool. They don't get into the super, you know, uh, details, but they, you know, give you those insights to kind of help steer you in the wrong direction, even if you don't know anything about analytics, which is cool. Um, the Artist Haven says, thanks for the podcast help last live. Look for roundabout conversations in 2024. Any suggestions on how to approach guests for a uh, guests for a new podcast? Just reach out. Let people know. Like some people get excited about helping people start, uh, you know, podcasts and being first guests and things like that. So, yeah, just reach out and, uh, you know, just let people know that you have the podcast. Let them know that it's new and you're trying to get it all up and all that. And then, um, you know, see if they will participate. Um, if you are a StreamYard user, um, they also do have a collaboration area to where you can go in there and you can look for guests and you can send them invites as well. Um, just... Hey, will you, will you uh, cover this for just a second? Yeah, 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 I will. So in regards to sending people information about a podcast, and I know Nick gets a ton of these and I, I get some of these as well. Um, if you're reaching out to people, uh, tell a little bit about, about your podcast. Don't just say, hey, well, you want to come on my podcast? Be very specific. Hey, you know, what's going on? This is the sort of thing that I do on my podcast. It's a new podcast. This is the topic that I would like to talk about. If there's going to be other guests that have already agreed to it, let them know the other people might come on. The, uh, Get the more information you can give people, and I would put something in the subject title as well. Something like, um, I would love for you to come on my podcast, right? Like, because that's going to stand out to me if it comes into my email box versus like, hey, how you doing? And I probably won't answer. I mean, not because it came from you, but just there's so much spam that comes in. But I want you to be a guest on my podcast, maybe written in all caps even. That might get my attention. So something to think about is how to get the person's attention and then how to give them as much information as possible so they can actually make a decision. Then in the email, give them the best way to get a hold of you. That's how I would uh, address that. Uh, scrolling on. I'm going through the chat right now to see... Um, what I missed here. So Nil, uh, Nil the Navigator says, creator, uh, create a fix, high quality, use a compressor. Oops, I missed something here. Okay, we're talking about something totally different. 
D goes into step away for a second and D goes into like audio stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. He's talking were, about I walk away and come back in, he's talking about compressors. What? I thought they were talking about creator mix, but he was oh. replying to someone called Creator Fix. Oh, oh got it, about got compressors. It, got it. Yeah. So I was yeah, I was gonna say, yeah. So uh, next up on our list here, we've got uh, King CMC TV. What's going on? I hope you're doing great. Happy New Year. Says uh, that they do daily content, been on YouTube for a year or more gaming content. How many gamers do we have in here? If you're a gamer, just say, hey, Weebly Craft, what's going on? Welcome to the live stream. Creator Fix, what's going on? I hope you're doing great. Um, but they have a gaming channel. The goal of the channel is to fully monetize. And the question is, can you use YouTube library music for free in your YouTube videos? And how can you use the videos that your subscribers watch to improve your own videos, even though the video is opposite of your content? So if the video is opposite of your content, then you need to make an adjustment. Like when it comes to like, if people are interacting with content, that is not the content that you are making, uh, you know, currently, then in that particular case, like an adjustment needs to be made because you're growing the channel around content that you don't even make. So because of that, um, if it was my channel, I would either start a new channel or I would take that video off um, and make sure that everything that I'm making is targeted towards or pointed towards or targeted towards a very specific audience that I'm trying to reach with the content. Um, so that's what I would do in that particular situation. When it comes to the music, um, um, uh, you can use the YouTube audio library, but they also have this creator music thing that they're pushing. Be super careful with the creator music. So you can use that. Um, they do have licensing. It's not, you know, free for some of it. And some of that licensing can change over time, which is in the terms. Um, there was actually somebody just complaining about this. I believe it was last week on Reddit. What happened? Um, basically, they had a video up and the license changed, like the, the rules changed for that particular piece of content and they paid for it. They were freaking out on Reddit because uh, they're like, man, this is just garbage because you know they just didn't read all the rules, right? Yeah. Uh, and I told them, I was like, I did like a 30 minute live stream yeah. on my channel talking about this and uh, you know, it sucks you didn't get to see it because uh, you know because now you're in that situation. But uh, yeah, so they licensed a song, and that their video has been on YouTube for like you know a year, like you know wh whatever, however much time you know uh, since they licensed it, and uh, uh, and then the license changed, and uh, they ended up having an issue because of it. Yeah. So, so let me say this: if you're going to okay, let me say that YouTube has done an amazing job at adding better music to their library of music, even mm -hmm. the free music. Yeah. But if you're gonna use music out of YouTube, I would say to avoid the one that you have to pay for with the licensing, just avoid it, it's a headache. Yeah. Uh, just avoid. Or just read the rules. Like if, no, if you wanna use it, it just read no, the rules. Listen, listen, trust me, if you're not gonna listen to anything I ever say for the rest of my life, avoid something that you're gonna pay for. Oh, that was easy, that's all I gotta listen to? Yeah. Okay, there yeah, you go. this is great, go. Let's go. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, that That's was it. easy. That, that, was, that it. was the key. That was it. Yep, it just unlocked for me. There that you was go. great. Now sense. I don't have no. to listen to you anymore. Listen, don't, don't, yeah. Like, like popular music, if it's a popular song, there, I guarantee you somewhere in the future there's going to be problems with that song as libraries get bought and sold because that's something that's happening in the music industry right now is people are selling their libraries. It, it, the licensing's going to change. So when it comes to popular music, don't, don't buy that stuff. Um, don't do it. And if you're going to use free music inside the YouTube library, you have an option between music that you have to give attribution, which is credit, and music that you do not have to give attribution. You can search. If it, you have to have credit, if you have to give attribution for that free piece of music in your, in your description and you don't give it, you can get a copyright claim. So you can search by music that you do not have to give attribution to and you can use that music without any credit. Also be careful of using music from YouTube on other platforms. Jesse St. Louis in the house. What's up, my dude? Hope you're doing awesome. It's been a while. Says uh, that changing license thing is happening on Epidemic Sound too. Um, so he's running into that problem over there also. So yeah, you gotta be careful. Just use Creator Mix, y'all. Yep, use Creator Mix. Yeah, So um, shameless plug, and it's a smaller library, but we're not changing licensing. Just right. what we've had, you can use it. Don't worry about it. Yep. If you get any content That's ours, claims, by the way, that dispute service. it. You can dispute it. It's, it's a fake or an error within content ID. Yep. Oval RC, thank you for the super chat. It says, Nick, um, advice for a large <laughs> channel. Should you allow video remixing or no? Um, that's your call, but I recommend that you do just because, you, you know, that? every time that somebody, every time, Super track. Every time that somebody, you know, remixes your song, they're getting you in front of, or not your song, but your, but your video, they're getting you in front of more people, right? So that's a win. And, it, and that only happens through the short shelf anyway. So it's not like it's coming up as, you know, like long form videos. Um, when it comes to the difference between a copyright claim and remixing. So a copyright claim is when somebody actually claims the ad revenue from your video because you use something. So as we were just talking about the music thing. The person who owns the rights to that music or 
company who owns the right to that music. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's what I was going right. to say. So yeah, so the the person that owns the the rights to that music, um, when they issue a claim on the video, it just means that they get the ad revenue for that video. Right. And right. We, yeah. Uh, and here's something to be aware of too: if you're remixing other people's videos mm -hmm. and they've got music playing, mm -hmm. just <laughs> just be careful. Yep. <laughs> be careful. Like using using music on on YouTube or any Facebook any of that stuff, it is a minefield. Just be mm -hmm. careful. Yep. Be careful. Uh, let's see here. Next up on the list, same for the songs in the 90s. Uh, yeah, same for basically anything that you uh, anything that you'll that you don't have the right to use. Yeah, you got to be you got to be careful. So uh, let's see here. Next up on the list here, we've got uh, we're on number eight already. D. Wow. So we got Midwest Ghost Hunters. That's cool. Ooh. That sounds interesting. Um, they do bi-weekly content. Um, it's an entertainment channel. The goal of the channel is to take folks along on a journey to some of the most haunted places in America. I love that. See, that is, that is very clear. Yeah. Super, super clear. Mm -hmm. Question. Hey, Nick. Uh, the audio in a couple of my older videos hey. is very... <laughs> hey, Nick. And that's it. Hey, Nick, and nobody as, else in the room. As, as hey, this... hey, Nick, and everybody else in chat. As... The audio on a couple of my older videos is very hey, low. Yeah. Hey, henchmen sitting over there in the corner. <laughs> right. As this yeah. side of the screen just gets blurry, as yeah. I just kind of like fade yep. away. Hey, Nick. Hey, everybody else in the chat. Hey, people in the building they're streaming in. Right. Hey, everybody in Chiang Mai. Yeah. Hope you're doing great. Hey, right. people in Thailand. Yeah. Everybody else. Hey, hey neighbors. Except live... for that person across from Nick. Hope you're doing great. Hey, neighbors who, who are <laughs> living next door to the Nim and Live studio. <laughs> <laughs> says uh the audio on a couple of my older videos is very low and hard to hear even with headphones um these videos are still getting views I'm wondering if there's a way inside youtube to amplify it or will they have to stay this as a lesson learned thanks for all you do for the small creator approaching 800 subs following your tips congratulations to you on the 800 subs so yeah so um you can go and you can like cut out parts of videos and things like that but i don't think and I could be wrong on this, but I, I don't think that you can adjust the audio volume once it's in, uh, once it's already up on YouTube. Um, double check it, but I really don't think so. If you're going to check it, check it on a computer, um, but I really don't think so. Um, just to confirm, though, if not, just take it as a lesson learn and then, you know, just move on from there. Yeah, Doug says he doesn't think so um, also, For and he's what? very in tune with, you know, all the YouTube's features also. So um, that's two you know, don't think so's on that one. So pretty sure that you can't, what was um, the question? uh, if you can adjust the audio inside YouTube's editor Ooh. in order to, uh, in order to increase the audio level. So one thing that is an advantage is YouTube does normalize the audio, but it can still come in pretty low, you know, at times. So because of that, um, if you do have any type of audio software that allows you to see the, the, the luffs on it, then um, in that particular case, it's what, negative 14, I think, for YouTube. Yeah. And if you render out the, the videos to negative 14 for YouTube, then it should come through uh, you know, pretty clear and, and loud for you there. Next up on the list. So if you have a question, just as a reminder, if you, just in case you're just joining the stream, um, we're cruising through these. So if you put your question in there right now, it should get answered, but all the questions are being pulled from the form that's down in the description below. It's free to put your questions in there, but you will have to wait for us to get to the question if you are putting it in there. Um, so just as a heads up there in terms of how to get your uh, questions answered. So next up, we've got official stellar core says they upload one time per week or more the type of channels and ai generated heavy metal music and videos the goal of the channel is monetization and to share my art and the question is how can i get in touch with other content creators who are interested in collaborations i believe i have a very specific niche that hasn't quite exploded yet and i want to be at the forefront when it does for example i would love to have reaction youtuber do a reaction to one of my songs so um, a couple things to just keep in mind here. So you might already be aware of this. I'm not sure. Um, but YouTube in the very near future is going to require you as an AI content creator to put disclaimers on all of your content to let the viewers know that it was generated by AI. So just a heads up, um, you know, that's coming your way very soon. Um, in addition to that, when it comes to collaborations, you can uh, reach out to any content creator that has it available on their About Me page through the email address on their About Me page. So if you go to any about me page on YouTube um, as long as the creator set it up then you have the option there to where you can click on the business inquiry button and then there you're gonna have to prove that you're not a robot so you're doing AI stuff so maybe you are a robot I'm not sure <laughs> I'm just kidding but uh, with that then once you uh, you know click that box then you can get the email address then you can send them an email address when you do it you know let them know the, the plan that you have but keep in mind 
what you are wanting is not a collaboration. What you're wanting is a shout out. If the outreach is for them just to do the reaction of your video, what are you going to do for them as part of that collaboration, right? Because collaborations go in two directions, shout outs go in one. So because of that, if you are trying to do an actual collaboration, you're going to need to think of something that would be appropriate for the music channel that would be other than music, which doesn't really make a lot of sense when it comes to, uh, you know, an actual collaboration. But if you're trying to get a shout out, then it's a little bit different. And I'm just going to tell you ahead of time, if you're just reaching out to people trying to get a shout out, you're probably you're probably going to be uh, pushing a very big boulder um, up a very steep mountain, so to speak, uh, in that particular case. Hill. Yeah. You don't push boulders up hill, up, up mountains. That's what that's how big of a challenge this is going to be. OK. Yeah. Yeah. In, in his case, he's going to be pushing or their case, they're going to be pushing a boulder up a mountain. OK, that's that's. That's difficult. I know. That's what I'm yeah. saying. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Those those of us with, with means would helicopter lift that thing and mm -hmm. pick it up that way. Right. Right. Because we're not pushing anything. Up right. But like they that. need to push it though. Yeah. yeah. Or so we'll you, could, you could hire Sherpas. You could hire Sherpas. You could hire Sherpas. You could to, hire to, to push it. Listen, forget that whole thing. We're going to figure this out. <laughs> we can get some yaks. We can get some Sherpas. We can get some helicopters. We can get that through the mountains. Boulders up the mountains. We can make it happen. Now, what about hills? Hills seems easy roll in that, that regard. You yeah. roll a hill seems easy. But here's the thing: you know, a helicopter is going to be like, we're not going to waste our time, doing right? That. Right. We're not. Why are we taking this boulder up here? Right. It's kind of sure there's boulders up there already. Right. Kind of silly. Nobody's going to deal with bringing <laughs> yaks over for a hill, <laughs> but a mountain. Oh, love it. Yeah. All right. So next up, we've got Fat Ride. Um, Fat Ride. Uh, they make their content on an iPhone. They do fat biking and biking. Oh, the cool. goal of the channel um, says that this time they are learning to make and edit better videos. I love that you're isolating the focus to like, hey, this is what I'm working on right yeah. now, and this is what I'm trying to do better right yes. now. Love it. So instead of it being like, hey, this is what I'm trying to do with the channel, you're like, I'm trying to get really good at this thing. I love it. Goal of the channel, or the question is, um, that is the best value, a or what is the best uh, value AI filter app for your phone? D, do you know this? The best AI filter, filter. app. Yeah, I'm not sure what. Uh, you know, what they would. Like, like, I'm not sure like what type of filter. A filter app in regards to making yourself like you know fixing turning your yourself skin into a cat or something, or turning yourself into something else. Uh, man, off the top of my, I, I don't know. For a phone, I, I'm not sure. But dude, did did you see the uh, the uh, preview for the Insta? The new, I think it's the new Insta 360. No. So this isn't sponsored. We don't have any relationship with them. Um, but they have a thing to where. You can record the video. At least this is this is what the uh, advertisement suggests. Okay. So imagine I was making a video of you right now with my phone. Okay. So as soon as that video is finished, I can just highlight you and I can say turn turn D into a dog, and then it would just turn you into a dog right there without having to export the footage, without having to do anything. It does it all inside of the device itself. Okay. Pretty incredible. Yeah, really cool. Um, so I would say this, and I, I, I don't know if you're looking for video or a photo, but the Face app is pretty cool because the face back app is really great <laughs> um <laughs> if you have video leap on your phone, other guys reference there video leap has some amazing ai tools now mm. the problem with ai video if that's what you're looking for is right now especially on phones it's short yeah like you're, it's in seconds yeah but you can kyber like kyber you can do the legit stuff in the kyber app can you yeah for the ai video yeah and kyber now uh they haven't they, they put out an app uh, about a month ago and it's, it's like it's, it's just like the website oh so, really yeah you can do everything that you want uh, you inside go. of there but it's not just filters though so it's not like you know like you would be recording a video here and you would just have a filter pop up instead it's something that you have to you know upload and process after the fact yeah but yeah, so I, yeah, I'm just looking at my phone. What do I have? I, I have Face App. I've got the Video Leap uh, that I use anytime I play with AI stuff, uh, where I want to put a picture into it um, or a short, short little video clip. Video Leap stuff is pretty cool too. Yeah, we played with that at that time at uh, yeah. Starbucks. That was pretty cool. Hey, you know what we should do? Anytime we do screen recordings of anything on our phones, yeah. we should put because you know how you can make like custom shortcuts and you can make custom icons for your iPhone. Yeah. we should put a Face Back app on there. Just to see, just for people like to catch it, right? And just put like, put like Will Ferrell's Rename face it. in it. Face yeah, and just back. call it like face back. Yeah. The back right. of the head. Or the back there. of his head. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, um, Anfield Road Layout in the Loft says, can we, can we use Thanks, Jerry. music from Creator Mix in StreamYard as background music when you're live? Yes, you can. The thing is, if you're going to pump in music while using StreamYard, you're going to need either something on your computer or some sort of a mm. piece of hardware that will mix the music in for you. So if you're in a Mac, you can use something like Loopback uh, and, and you could stream it off of uh, Spotify or Apple Music. Mm -hmm. On a PC, what is it called, Banana? Um, voice what? Meter Banana. Voice Meter Banana, yeah, yeah. On a PC is Voice Meter Banana, mm -hmm. where you can actually route 
it's basically like a, a mixer yeah. for your computer. So mm -hmm. you can route it through that way. So you can say, okay, here's a plug-in stream. So we, if you can go to our Spotify, uh, our Spotify account and you can, you know, we have a broken down by like lo-fi or synthwave or cyberpunk or rock. So you can stream that. We also have just live streaming music. You yes. can stream that in so you can adjust the levels so it's not too loud. So yes, you can. Just It just takes a little trickery to do it. Marvin Hoy, welcome to the Nimminati. Make sure when you get the chance, you go to Nimmin VIP. Welcome to the Nimminati. That you go to NimminVIP.com. That's going to redirect you to our members only Facebook group. Keep in mind that we also have a Discord that I keep forgetting to add to my description template for these live streams. But we also do have a community Discord that's free to everyone. But we also have, so if you're a Discord user, make sure that you join that. Um, but in addition to that, if you are a channel member, we also have a dedicated area over there where you can ask questions and get feedback on stuff and things like that. So uh, next up, we've got Bone Yard Lawn Service is our next channel that we're looking at, or the next channel. Plosives are running wild. Yeah, I got it covered already. On, what'd you do? Yeah, I, I scooted this back, turned the microphone sideways, so I'm going past it instead of at it. We need another one of these. That yeah, we've got one right there. Uh, that one is for the... Uh, the Sure? Yes. I have one at home I'll bring over. Yeah, bring it. Yep. Um, Get the oh, it's plosives been brought. out of here. It's, it's brought. Okay, so uh, next up, we've got you Boneyard. Back, you can back it up a little bit too. Boneyard Lawn Service. Um, they do, uh, let's see here, lawn care content. The goal of the channel is 10,000 subscribers. And the question is, I have four partnerships and wondering, should I start creating my own digital products or wait until I have a couple thousand more subscribers? Absolutely start creating your own products. Here's something that is that is really important for everyone here. Thanks, Charlie. Is when you create your own products, regardless of how big or small they are, when you create your own products, it gives you like, okay, let's do it this way. If you promote something as an affiliate, then you can make a lot of money with that. However, you just make those sales and you don't get emails or anything. In most cases, some things will give you emails too, but in most cases you don't get emails. So basically you have that sale and you sent people that way, but you don't get it, their contact information. Um, if you do sponsorships, then you send them the sales, but you don't get the information. So when you have your own product, not only do you get the sale, but you also get the, the buyer's information. So then you can also send them additional offers. You can keep them up to date when you publish videos, if they choose to opt into that. You can do all kinds of fun stuff related to, you know, just, just spreading awareness about other things that you're doing through that and giving them product updates and all these other things. So if you're a content creator, definitely consider, you know, having your own products of some kind, regardless of how big or small they might be. If you're selling it for $5 or if you're selling it for thousands of dollars, just, you know, try to get some of those things in place because you can make a lot of money doing that because keep in mind, influencer marketing this year is set to be an $18 billion industry. And what that is, is that's people doing brand deals. Okay. So with people doing brand deals, one of the things that you have to think about is the reason that companies do brand deals is because it brings attention to their products and it, and it works. That's why the industry is growing. So when you have your own products and you're bringing attention to them, it gives you the opportunity to tap into the other side of that. And in addition to that, when you let people know like, Hey, this is ours, we made this, you know, all of that, then it also adds additional credibility to that to where, you know, for the, for your, you know, uh, for your core community to where, you know, they know like, okay, well then if I have a problem, I can just send a message to them and then, you know, get it taken care of that way. So it, you know, creates m several layers of benefit to you. In addition to that, when you're publishing content and you're mentioning things in your videos, you never know, um, you know, like if you publish your next video, even though you're, you have, you know, a smaller, uh, you know, I mean, you're, you're, you're doing okay. Cause you're approaching 10,000 subs, but even though, uh, uh, like when you're publishing videos, your next video could be the one that takes off. And if you don't have that message in there and you don't have a product for that, then in that particular case, you might miss a huge opportunity to make a bunch of money over time from that product that you just happen to mention in that particular video. So as a great example of this, I've only got a handful of videos on my channel where I mentioned my website, Tuber Tools, and that site still generates money right every month because um, I have like a monthly membership in there and it still generates money every month and it's been doing that since I published it and that was just by spreading some awareness through a you know handful of videos on my channel and then those videos continue to you know drive sales to it um, I don't promote it often so because of that it doesn't really get the attention that it should get however you know um, those types of things you know are fantastic and and if that next video takes off and you have a mention in there then that can just feed as long as it's evergreen content that can just feed your product for a really long time and make you a lot of money over time so absolutely so next up we've got 
Uh, Mr. Rinko, Mr. Rinko um, says they do educational content. The goal of the channel is education in DIY training. The question is, can you review the channel and give me some tips? No, we're not looking at channels um, during this stream. So, uh, so I'll move on to the next one. Next up, we have Art with Mazzy. Art with Mazzy, uh, the type of channel is art for kids, family-friendly, toddler, and how-to. The goal of the channel is to teach kids how to draw. The question is, I wanna know why family and friends kid music, no copyright, I could play in the background of my videos and also how I could possibly play the music like toddler's music, playful music, any apps or websites that include no payment because I'm trying to save money that let me use free music for videos. So here's the thing. YouTube music. Yeah, so you can use YouTube's music, but keep in mind, you know, with, you know, these types of things, you know, um, when you are, yeah, YouTube Audio Library is kind of your your only choice for that one. Of course, you could use Creator Mix, but I don't think we have anything kid, you know, no. friendly in there. No. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not that type of stuff in there. So, yeah, you, you might find something inside of YouTube's uh, Audio Library. Um, let's see here. Next up, we've got Graciously Blessed is our next channel. They upload when they have time. The type of channel is inspirational. The and, goal of the channel. And by the way, you can say when you're inside the audio library, you can probably, I think they got a search. Do they still have the search feature inside of the audio it's library? It's been a while since I've looked in there, so I don't want to say yes because they I'm not sure. They used to have a search feature where you could type in like children, possibly even children's music, and then make sure you sort by attribution or not attribution. Attribution means credit. If you use something that requires attribution and you don't give them attribution in your description, you can get uh, a copyright claim or they will inject um, ownership of that music into your description. Yep. Next up, we've got Graciously Blessed. Uh, they upload when they have time. They do inspirational content. The goal of the channel is to promote God's goodness in an impactful yet realistic way. And the question is, how do I grow subscribers and views? Even with creating community posts, um, it is with no results. So this probably isn't going to be what you want to hear. But when it comes to growing a community online and getting better results from what it is that you're doing, and this is going to sound basic, but I'm going to get into some nuance here. Um, you have to go through the process of learning how to make content that people respond to. So if you've never done anything like this before and you've never had to get a response from, you know, an image and a little bit of text, and you've never had to put together a piece of content that is designed to keep people watching or to add very specific value and things like that, then right now you're at the very beginning part of that learning curve. And in order to get past that learning curve, you're going to have to practice by publishing additional content and you have to work on on your skill development around creating the content and you have to work on the understanding of the people that you're reaching with that content. So here you're you're promoting God's uh, you know goodness in an impactful yet realistic way. So you got to think, okay, if this is who it is that I am trying to reach with this content, um, then in that particular case, what can I make for them that's going to add the most value to them and how am I going to grab their attention when the video first starts? Actually, let's let's get past let, let's not even start there. Let's start at if you have a video talking about something, then why would that topic be important? The first qualifier is why would that topic be important to the people that you're reaching? And why would it be so important that they would want to spend their valuable time watching a video about it? And then from there, you got to think, okay, if this is the topic and this is something, and I do have a reason that they would want to spend this time, then how would I package this up? And by package it, I mean your thumbnail and your title. And the packaging is basically what people see from the outside if it's a piece of long form content. So you have to then think to yourself, okay, um, if this is what the video is about, then how am I going to present this from the outside? What am I gonna put in the thumbnail to help the people that I'm trying to target with this content identify that this content is about something that might matter to them and that it would grab their attention quickly and easily if it pops up in their mobile feed or if it pops up on a, on a homepage or a suggested video on YouTube or even a YouTube search. How would it grab their attention and help them quickly identify that this is about something they might care about? And then from there, once they grab their, once you grab their attention they hit the title then you got to think okay now i'm presenting this through the title and of course the thumbnail and title always work together as a team to win the click as well as the topic so then you got to think okay with this title um what about this particular title is something that would one help grab their attention if they happen to see that first but two that would actually compel them through you know however i'm presenting this title to click on the video and out of all of those details 
all of that stuff, if you've never done any of this before, all of that stuff is, is it's time consuming. It's, it's things that you have to learn how to do over time. Okay. And then from there, you also have to consider that when somebody hovers over your video, you also have the autoplay that happens where YouTube starts giving them a preview of the content. So because of that, then you got to start thinking, okay, so I grabbed their attention. They saw the title. They haven't clicked on it yet, but YouTube, they've, they've stopped. And now YouTube is starting to show them some of my video. So do I need to add captions to the beginning of it? Do I need to show like religious imagery? Um, do I need to be on camera? Like, you know, what is it that needs to be happening there to also kind of express what they might be getting out of this video while while they're sitting there deciding if they're going to click on it or not that's just one part then once you get them to click on it then you have the next step which is okay they just arrived in your video what are you doing to help them identify that yeah this is something that i should continue watching what are you doing to spread awareness to that person about what it is that they might get out of watching your video or at least just reinforcing you know what it was that you <coughs> used your packaging for with the video right you have to go through all of that and then once you start getting into the content, you got to start breaking it down and, you know, kind of look at your timeline. If it's a long form video as like all these little slices. Right. And you got to start thinking to yourself, OK, if I can get them past this part, then uh, uh, one, how am I going to get them past this part? And then two, if I get them past this part, is there is there going to be a point here where I need to reengage them to where it might get kind of boring? Or do I, you know, just kind of keep letting it play and just kind of hope they get through that part because everything that I'm sharing in there, you know, through the messaging that you're doing, all of that's good. And I think they'll make it through it. But then once they get through that part, why should they continue to keep watching? And you just kind of keep renting and repeating those ideas until you get to the end of the video. So again, if this is something you've never done before, it's okay, but it's just important to know that there is a learning curve that comes with all this stuff. And if you haven't done this before, the only way that you're going to get through it is by learning how to do all of those things that I just mentioned and learning how to identify those things and just thinking it through, right? If you just ask yourself the questions when you're putting everything together, why would they care about this topic? How would this thumbnail help them identify this is something they care about? Why would this title compel them to click? Once they click, what about this intro would help them, uh, you know, be more compelled to stick around and watch the video instead of backing out and going to watch something else? And then for each part of the video, why, why would that be important to the viewer as well? Um, and then you learn how to do all of that. And then that's when you'll start getting, you know, more activity in your content. Now, if it's shorts, totally different game there, of course, the topic's going to matter too, but then your main focus there is how can I grab somebody's attention when the video first starts? Because there it just pops up and it happens. So in that case, how can I grab their attention there and then keep them watching, you know, that short or possibly even looping it if that's something that you, uh, you know, choose to do. So while you were doing that, Renee came in. YouTube oh, hey, what's up, Creator Renee? What's, what's up, Renee? Uh, and so Happy was, New Year, man. Yeah, he was talking about uh, YouTube music. So I, 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 was, I hadn't been into YouTube music for a while. They completely mm -hmm. renovated it, redesigned it. It looks great. It's smooth. But remember how I was talking earlier about how things change. I just want to read a couple of things here. So learning the basics, and this stuff is important. So what happens if a license expires? And this is where you really have to pay attention to what it is you're purchasing. Viper man about tech, what's up, Hey, dude? Viper. Some licenses expire after a limited term. If you choose a license that doesn't last in perpetuity, then it will have an expiration date. You can check this before purchasing, so you have to make sure that oh, it doesn't expire. Music. Okay. Right. Um, you can renew the term before it expires if the song is still available for licensing. He says here the attribution requirements, um, he said there is a filter for that. Right. So you got to be careful if you're purchasing music because if the license expires and that track is no longer available when your license is up for renewal, which you would have to renew that license, guess what? You no longer have a license to use that track. And then if you go into the music and you even select the free music and it's got the little pop up there for the information, it says included free results that are licensable with fixed terms. These tracks will allow you to fully monetize your video for the duration of the license. Like this is just a minefield. This is a minefield for creators uh, wanting to use music. So just look at the stuff that requires no attribution. If you don't want any headache and do it that way. Yep. Uh, and you know, I hate to throw shade at YouTube, but this is a super complicated system. Yep. And I think, uh, I don't think, when it comes to tools that are helpful for creators, I think, I think YouTube's heart is in the right place here. But I think the complication of music licensing as a whole 
because YouTube has to deal with it, the record it's labels. It's confusing anyway. It's confusing yeah. anyway, and it's yeah. complicated. There's all these different labels and distributors to deal with. So I think YouTube's heart's in the right place, but I just think the minefield of licensing to begin with, and it changes per country. So like just when I went to log in and identified that I wasn't in the United States, so I had limited licensing outside of the United States. Mm -hmm. So I, I, you know, heart in the right place, but I think just to avoid that paid stuff. Sorry, YouTube, but you know, this is not a, a, a good thing for creators long-term. Uh, Tan going the kitchen is our next question here. Thanks to the super chat, by the way, it says former aperture, aperture movement here. Um, how many computers um, would you need to live stream and what other equipment is recommended? So you can technically just live stream on your phone. Um, that's one option. We're using a laptop. Yeah, right now we're using the laptop, but we do have other devices attached to it. So we have the laptop and then we have an A10 mini plugged into it, but that's just because we're using multiple cameras. Yeah. If we didn't have multiple cameras, then in that case, we would just use one thing that would be a cam link is probably what we'd choose to use and um, a cam link is a product that's sold by elgato and you can take El the Gato. you can take the hdmi <laughs> out of your camera and you can plug it into that but that's only if you're using a dslr if you're just using a webcam because there's some really good webcams out there now too yeah, 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 yeah. if you're just using a webcam then you can literally just use a laptop plug in that webcam and you can technically go live just with that but the audio is probably not going to be amazing if you did want to make the audio amazing then in that case you would need to get some type of audio interface you can get a cheap um, i think it's a focus right 2i2 for under a hundred dollars now yeah. um, you can get something like that that is also usb um, or USB C that would plug directly in and then you would get some type of microphone that you would connect to that and that's pretty much it outside of you know any lighting that you would get so if you're streaming in the daytime you could technically sit by a window if you're trying to you know not spend a bunch of money on stuff but um but if you did have the budget to add just you know some lighting or at least to have some lights from around your house that would be hitting you from the front instead of everything hitting you from the top then in that case you know that can you know in some cases give you some good lighting too but you don't need a ton of stuff in order to live stream you can do it pretty basic and still have a really high quality stream so back in the day before we started doing like multiple cameras and things like that back in the day i streamed on a logitech c922 webcam and because it allows you to and that particular camera, like you'd probably want something a little better these days. But in, with that particular camera, um, I used it for years because um, it allows you to go in and adjust the settings. So you can adjust the contrast, the exposure, you can adjust everything on it. And then when you mix that with controlled lighting, then you can really dial things in and make everything look good. So if you're just getting started and you're like, hey, I just want to start this on a budget of some kind so I can you know, just kind of see how I like live streaming and all that. In that case, I'd go the webcam route um, and, and go with that. Another option is uh, Rode makes their, I think you have one here, don't you? The NTG uh, plugin, Mike, that also works. The, the USB? Yeah. I do. No, 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 not that one. Oh, yeah, that's another one, too. Yeah, they also have pod mics. Thank you. Yeah. That They have pod USB mics. USB pod mics. Yeah. yeah, they have USB pod mics and things like the Blue Yeti microphone yeah. that you can also plug in directly to USB to where you don't even need an audio interface. So that actually would remove one of those component, components as well. So a USB microphone, a USB webcam, or USB-C, either one, um, and then you're good to go either in natural lighting or you can you know get a, a couple of uh you know studio lights in order to you know have full control over your lighting environment so i, I want to i just tackle this really quick so renee uh, youtube creator lazy Rarely, so I, I think he posted you know happy to send any and all feedback when i was talking about the creator music so mm -hmm. Here's, he, I, let's just kind of do this as a group right now in regards to music. And by the way, Renee, I understand the complexities of, of, of music licensing. So I'm not throwing this all on YouTube yeah. and YouTube's lap, but everyone in here right now, just type in a simple yes. If you understand what's going on with licensing with music or not type in yes. If you understand you, you, uh, YouTube music licensing, type in yes. I'm gonna put if in you no. don't, if you don't understand, or if you think it's confusing YouTube music licensing, type in no. So I'm just I just want to see how where people could you know maybe I'm maybe I'm you know maybe I'm yeah well wrong. you had to look into it for creator mix so I think you're yeah. probably way more advanced on that than than most people are yeah because you spend a substantial amount of time like digging into that for the sake of creator mix yeah um for me like I know like basics about it but in terms of all the nuanced stuff that you know right. yeah like I, I don't know right. that either so if you understand it type yes if you don't understand and you're confused type no i'm just curious so we got a kind of like artist yeah it seems like there's a mixed bag in here so my my whole thing about youtube and the way this is set up and by the way i think the read look at it the redesign looks fantastic the thing is if people 
people don't like to read. Mm-hmm. And, and if anyone in here has ever sold a product, if you sold a, 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 yeah. a you know, an They don't actual, even like watching videos. You can yeah. tell people in a video, do this, yeah. do this, do this. And then you get a comment like, yeah. hey, how do you do that? Right. Yeah. People yeah, don't totally. even want to finish a video. Yeah. So if you've bought a product or you have digital <laughs> products for sale, people don't read the instructions. They right. don't read it. What do you do? You know, I, I guarantee you 50 to 75% of the people in here, when you get something with an instruction manual, mm-hmm. whoosh, goes away. Yeah. People don't like to read. Yeah. So when it comes time to deal with like music licensing, Will this affect my channel or not? And YouTube has all these different things you got to click and learn about. People aren't reading that crap, right? Some you know? people are, but yeah, yeah. just general. You know, the masses now, are not to, reading. Now, to be that fair, stuff. to be fair though, <laughs> to be not. fair, like if you are going to be using something like that, yeah. to be fair, it is your responsibility to to to, to, to read it and and Google the things you don't understand and you know all that stuff. Most people aren't going to do it. But, but it is, the, the but thing. it is their responsibility, 100%. right? So it's not 100%. like it's not like I, I wouldn't say that it's like an intentional setup, but it is complicated enough that you know that, I think that you know a lot of people are kind of tuning out on that. The the point I'm getting at, it, it what is the responsibility? Hundred mm-hmm. percent. The responsibility always falls on you. So if yeah. you if you use one of these tracks and you did it the wrong way, it's because you were lazy and you didn't read it, yeah. or maybe you just or you just misunderstood, it. yeah, right? Because it's complicated right. stuff. But I'll say this: I do understand it, and I think it's incredibly complicated. Mm. So I think when it comes time to can I use this, can I not use this, and you have all these different sections for music, and here's free stuff that you can use, attribution, no attribution, here's free stuff you can use, but the license might expire. You're just like, what? What? Do you, well, what can I use that I can just set it and forget it? Because I think as creators, most people just want to set it and forget it. Because you don't want... You, you know, just want to publish and then hope that you're going to be good forever. Yeah. yeah. Like, we have so many things to think about mm-hmm. as a creator. Yeah. We're in the hamster wheel. We're running. We're trying to think about thumbnails and topics and packaging and mm-hmm. all of this stuff. And the next video idea is the last thing we want to worry about to even have that seed in our head. Mm-hmm. is like, I hope three years from now I don't get a copyright claim on my videos. Right. Right. right? Just get this... Just eliminate that possibility for creators. That's all I'm saying. Get rid of that possibility so creators can just come in and just use it or not use it. Hudson Vintage, how to collect and sell it. Uh, thank you for the super chat, super appreciated. It says, hey, just a loyal, engaged viewer sharing my support. Thank you for super that. Chat. Really appreciate it. Happy New Year uh, to you also. Yeah, I could rant on this stuff all night. Yeah, I know. That's why I jumped in. That's why I jumped yeah. in right you, there. Just cut me off. Yeah. You know what you need? You need that, that so, cane with, uh, with the hook, with the on hook the end. at the end of it. Right. Yeah. Just reel him in, pull right. him in. So next up, we've got playing the mom game. <laughs> playing the mom game uploads one time per week or more. The uh, type of channel is decluttering and intentional shopping. And the goal of the channel is income potential and a creative challenge. And the question is, I have a handful of playlists, but I feel like all of my end screens and comments are leading back to the same playlist. So it seems really redundant and circular. Is that okay? Or would it be worth the time to go through and set up a series of videos that link to the next video, sort of a chain of videos instead of playlists? So um, definitely keep sending people into playlists. That's a good move. But what I want you to go look at is I want you to go to your audience tab on YouTube and go look at the amount of people that are interacting with your content that are regular viewers and go look at the amount of people that are interacting with your content that are new viewers. And then also look at how many videos people are watching because they'll show you that too. So when you go in there and you see that information, it starts to paint the picture to where it's like, okay, yeah, maybe it does make sense to continually spread awareness about this playlist because I do have tons of new people that I'm interacting with here. And then if it's somebody that's a regular viewer, not all of them are gonna make it to the end of the video. Not all of them are gonna watch every piece of content that you publish. And when they go into that particular playlist, they might be hitting it at different entry points too because when you do link to a playlist you can link to specific videos in that playlist so if you're doing that um, then they can go and they can have different entry points into that same playlist as well so um, just go look at that information and that's going to you know really answer the question for you but in a lot of cases or I would I would venture to say probably most cases you're gonna have a lot of new people interacting with your content this is the whole uh, this is the whole reason that one of the things that I recommend when it comes to your community feed is that you regularly publish videos into your community feed too or that you share videos in your community feed because you know we have the thing to where we're like hey I published this and there's a really good chance that you know everybody saw this video but in reality you know you have tons of people that are interacting with your channel you have people that are coming not I don't know about tons but you have people that are interacting with your channel every day um, you have new people that are coming in and because of that um, when you share a video that you've already made that maybe it was a month ago maybe it was two months ago maybe it was even last week the people that that community post is going to reach, some of those people are not going to have interacted with that content before. And for those people that do find it interesting, then they'll be able to go in that way and start interacting with that content. So, you know, because of that, it's important to, you know, just think about, okay, 
with this particular playlist, what's the idea? Am I trying to you know drive as many people as I can into it? Or am I only going to drive people into that playlist from these types of videos, right? So in my case, for example, like if I make a video um, about, you know, something that's very clearly targeted for new YouTubers, like the video that I just recently put out about, you know, every new YouTuber needs to watch this video, right? So in that particular case, I can't remember off the top of my head of what I linked to, but the anytime I make a, a video for new YouTubers, one of the things that I'm thinking about is, okay, um, it's probably a good move to link these uh, you know, viewers that are coming into this that are gonna be new to uh, my playlist that is the step-by-step -step guides because people typically respond well to that. Unless there's something nuanced to where I mention it in the video and then say I'm gonna link it in the end screen or something like that, then you know I'll have specific uh, playlists that I'll link to based on the topic itself. Same thing for like the AI content. So you know for my AI videos, those are all driving into an AI playlist. So the people that are interested in that can more easily find you know, those, uh, you know, the other AI videos that I have without having to go and explore and hunt everything down on my channel. So um, absolutely drive people into playlists and then just go and look into your audience tab and uh, just just so you can kind of uh, get an idea of, you know, the people that are, um, you know, interacting with your channel in terms of new people versus uh, returning people. All right, I got to show this and just, I just need like 30 seconds. All right, go. Okay, I got to put this on screen. Look, oh man, how do I put this full screen? Look at this. Can you see this? Are oh, you still going to the music? Yeah, yeah, because I was just clicking around. So this is a free song, and it says video monetization, then it says full monetization to you. Shorts, license not required to monetize videos. Okay, but then there's a, a thing underneath it that says using this track without a license. This track may make your video ineligible for monetization. Right. But they say right above it, full monetization to you. Yep. Like, what is it? Right. This pick is a, one. Pick one, man. Right. Yeah, right. okay, I just wanted to share that because that, like, just to express how confusing it is. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it's just not clear, man. Yep. Anyway, I'm finished. Yep. I digress. <laughs> so next up, we've got New Enlightenment with <laughs> Ashley. Um, they upload one time per week or more. They do video essay content. The goal of the channel is to educate, explore, and learn about social transformation. Uh, the question is, do you have tips for how to study other YouTubers in similar audience niches? What things should I pay attention to in their approach? How do I do this while keeping my own style unique as it evolves? Absolutely, Jason, painfully honest tech. What's going on, my dude? Hope that you're doing hey. great. So when it comes to um, studying other YouTube channels in your niche, um, the very first thing you wanna do is hit their videos page, hit the popular option um, to where it sorts by popular and see the videos that they've put out somewhere recently, like it doesn't have to be yesterday, but somewhere within the last like three to six months, see the videos that they've put out that are are, um, that are, you know, that, that have done well. And you start looking for patterns across all of your different competitors about things that have done well. And then you start thinking, is there anything complimentary, um, anything about those videos that I didn't like that I could make a video about, um, but still frame it around that topic since, you know, that's something that clearly, you know, th that the audiences that you're trying to reach, you know, have been interested in. You wanna look for those types of things. You wanna look at um, how they're doing their thumbnails because, you know, different niches in some cases will also have certain vibes, you know, when it comes the thumbnails and help people identify that it's that type of content. Um, you want to look at the imagery that they're using. You want to look at the things they're focusing on in their thumbnails. You want to look for triggers, uh, trigger words that they're using in their uh, titles. You want to look for any keywords that they're using in their titles, if they use them at all. Um, you want to look at how they start their videos. You want to look at how they end their videos. You want to look at how they're editing everything. You want to look at how they have their channels laid out. You want to look at if anybody's collaborating with anybody else. You want to look at how they're using their community feeds. You want to look for, like, are they naming their communities? Are they not naming their communities? Do they have icons in their videos? Do they have recurring themes or characters in their videos? Like, you know, you want to just look at everything it is that they're doing. And you want to think to yourself, okay, um, is there things that multiple of the top creators in my niche, is there things that a lot of them do consistently that maybe I should also incorporate to what it is that I'm doing? And I'm not saying to copy. What I'm saying is conceptually. So for example, if everybody has a name for their viewers and they address that name when you know their videos start, then in that particular case, maybe I should do something you know similar. Um, if they all you know are focusing on very specific things in their thumbnails and people are responding to that, maybe you should do something similar, right? So um, so it starts helping you get a better understanding of what um, what works well in your niche. In addition to that, go through and read their comment sections because your comment sections are gonna give you more nuanced information about the community. They're gonna give you more nuanced information about the things that people disagree with, the things that they agree with, the things that they support, the feedback on any products they're recommending. Like you're gonna get tons of information by reading their comments as well. So go through all of those things and um, and you'll start to get some you know good insights on your niche. In addition to that, 
also look at like publishing schedules, what days of the week are they publishing, what times of the day are they publishing, like look at all that stuff. And, um, and it'll start to help you paint a picture when you start noticing consistency. It's like, hey, out of these like, you know, 10 different channels, it seems that, you know, four of the top channels, they're doing these very specific things, right? So start looking, uh, start looking for that kind of stuff. I'm gonna welcome some people to the chat. Yeah, go. Gene Reacts, welcome. How you doing? Triathlon with Coach John. What is going on? What is going on? Spots you. How you doing? Mm. John Frank Songs. How you doing? Who else do we have in here? I saw um, uh, Cars videos. How you doing? And Vinyl Chapter. SMA Sky. What's going on? Hope you're doing great. Vinyl Chapter. I don't know what your channel's about, but I hope I hope you collect records. Mm, I hope you nice. collect vinyl records. Yeah, Sketches and Scrubs. What's going on? Hope yep. you're doing great. Oh, we got Super Chat. So uh, Hudson. Super Chat. Uh, Hudson uh, Vintage says, uh, I thought of a question. I publish every Sunday, gain about 1,200 subs a month. I'm going to miss tomorrow's video because I was injured. Will my channel tank? Um, first time missing a video. No. Channel's not going to tank. Um, so just keep in mind, like when you are publishing on a very rigid consistency, that's fine. And your viewers will, you know, start to expect that and things like that for the people that are the most engaged. Um, however, you know, if you miss a video or something comes up, it's fine. Your channel's not going to die or anything like that. Just try to get back to it, you know, in a reasonable amount of time. Like, I wouldn't recommend leaving a channel dormant for months on end. But if you're like, hey, I need to miss this week or something like that, do it. But I just would try to not do it consistently. And here's why. So it's really easy. Like, if you're doing something consistently, it's really easy to break that consistency and then continue to break that consistency, right? Because it's it's easy to not do the thing. You know what so, it's like? It's like, I'm just gonna skip the gym today. Right, and the I'm next not, thing you know, you haven't went to the gym in a year. Yeah. Right, Yeah. right. Yeah, same exact thing. So yeah. because of that, um, you know, take the break that you need um, and then, you know, just get back to it uh, as soon as you can. If possible, because you said that, you know, you have, uh, uh, you know, like an injury thing that you're dealing with. So, you know, if possible, if you know when that injury is going to be up and things like that, just mark it in your calendar, have a video, start my next video at this time or, you know, whatever, so that you can, you know, kind of hold yourself accountable um, for just kind of hopping back on the horse. And from your view, you might be thinking like, oh, yeah, of course, I'm going to hop back on the horse. But just to be on the safe side, just to go ahead and get it in there just to make sure um, is definitely something that I would. Uh, you know, put on the list. When you have momentum going, especially if you're fairly new to YouTube, I remember this. I remember breaking my upload schedule yeah. and being so worried. Yeah. And I would push things aside and just, oh, I got to upload my video today. Mm -hmm. You know, my girlfriend, like, hey, can we, can we go to dinner? It's Valentine's Day. No, I got I to publish a video. Right. You know, we gotta, I got to publish it first. Right. You know, I recorded it or whatever. Now I got to publish it and put it up there and we'll, I will come out later I right. gotta, because I've got to answer all the comments that come in when I publish. Right. Man, I used to be so dedicated to that. But and to it, be fair, you also got 100,000 subscribers on your channel pretty fast. I did. Right. So that's what it took. But right. you know what? If you, I would have pushed could it, have, you know, I could have done it after Valentine's Day. Sure, you could have managed the time better. Yes. Ahead of time, yes. and then you wouldn't even have been in that the, situation on Valentine's Day. The wheels yeah. would not have fallen off is right. what I'm trying to say. Right. I was very rigid with that stuff early on. Right, right. Um, but the point is, you have you don't have to be like clockwork, clockwork rigid, but you do need to have some form of consistency. Right. Or you start slipping. Right. I, I slipped. Yeah. I went from I went from like German engineering to just not doing it. Sure. Sure. <laughs> Precision German engineering. Sure. To not doing the thing because I because I just started slipping. Well, right. I, 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 my views are up this week as a channel as a whole. I won't publish a video. Mm. God, man, I'm still riding that other video. I'll take another. I, I won't. I won't publish this week either. Before you know it, there it goes. There it goes. <laughs> yep. Yep. Steve uh, Cassidy says, VidIQ awards points for including videos in playlists. I have videos that aren't relevant to a playlist. Should I make playlists for all videos to score points? No. So, so I'm not sure what the point thing is that you are talking about, but basically um, it don't put stuff in there to get points that don't like matter to anything. So like if they are, um, like if there's like a, some type of point thing they're doing and they're giving you some type of like internal reward, that doesn't matter. Um, when it comes to videos that are not relevant to a playlist, here's what you want to think about always 100% of the time for the people that are interacting with my videos. How can I categorize my content into playlists? that will help the people that are interacting my, with my content, that will help them find more of the content that they are enjoying from me. That's what you gotta be thinking about. Don't be trying to get points or you know anything like that. 
think about the viewers first. Always think about the viewers first. Are they gonna enjoy this video? Are they gonna be able to identify this video? Is this video gonna make sense to them? Is this gonna be of interest to them? Um, you know, how can I make it easy for them to find more of my content? I got a video coming out Monday that, that talks about this also as part of that video. Uh, make sure you watch that. But yeah, you wanna make sure that you're focused on the viewer. And when you're thinking of your playlist and things like that, you don't wanna just check the boxes by just putting in whatever. Instead, you wanna think about the viewer. Okay, if somebody clicks into this playlist, what's going to make sense for them how like if they're watching the first video in this playlist why would they watch the second video why would they watch the third video and so on right so you want to make sure that you're that you're thinking from that lens instead of just trying to check boxes to get um you know to get points of some kind with a with a tool that you're with the tool that you're using hey bill where in mexico are you Oh, nice. D spent some a considerable amount of time in Mexico. I was stuck there for two years yeah. uh, when the world shut down and mm -hmm. I couldn't get home to my home country here. Yeah. So Jerry says they give a score based on uh, best practices. So yeah, even with that score, right? Like, um, you know, you want to make sure that, that even with those scores that you're thinking about the viewers, right? you always want to make sure that you're thinking about the viewers. How do I make it easy for them to find more of my content? That's the priority because when you make it easy for the viewers, then like the viewers, like for my channel, like you, are what makes my channel run right so because of that when i'm publishing content i'm organizing my channel page and i'm updating thumbnails and i'm you know doing all this stuff right it's to make it easy for you to find more of the content that you might find value from on my youtube channel everybody here should be thinking about that same exact thing how can i just make it easy for people to navigate what it is that i'm doing and find more of the stuff that they're enjoying there's no me in youtube channel right yeah it's true <laughs> yeah that makes yeah, no sense. It's true. Yeah, it's kind of like the I and T thing. I yeah. know. Yeah. Yeah. No me and YouTube channel. Yeah. yeah. Love it. DMV MTB, thank you for the super chat. Super chat. Says Nick always says that the next video might be the one to get you views and subscribers. I hesitated to upload seven minute ver uh, seven minute vertical video last week, but it's now approaching ten thousand views and new subscribers. Nice. Love it. Yeah, you never there know, right? Like especially right when you're getting started and you're you're trying to develop those initial skills to get everything rolling, like you know you're gonna hit a threshold right for you know everybody here that's new and everybody that's in that process right now of just trying to get over that first hump. Like while you're developing skills and you're learning how to do all this stuff, you're gonna hit that threshold. And once you hit that threshold, you're gonna be like, okay, you know you're gonna publish that video and you're gonna think that it's gonna you know probably do like the other videos have done but you've gotten better you have a better understanding now you you know can put things together in a better way now that makes a lot more sense and then that next video you know could end up being the one that takes off and put you in a situation like that so nice work on on that yep. high five fist bump love it so uh let's see here so next up we've got number 17 d cruising wow, cruising right pedal through, to man. the floor pedal to the metal yep so we've got um pro fan talk pro fan talk uploads every other day the type of channel is nfl football and trending sports topics the goal of the channel is to monetize and grow the question is i'm brand new on tiktok less than a week what's the best way to drive youtube traffic from tiktok so what you can do there, um, first off, TikTok is not my jam in any capacity, but if you are trying to use TikTok, um, I recommend just trying to grow on TikTok. Um, so grow on YouTube too, but if you're uploading videos to TikTok, I would just try to grow there. But if you are trying to spread awareness about your YouTube channel, make sure that you do have a link in your bio. So there's a tool that I use for this, it's called Tube Spanner. If you go to nicknimmon.com slash bio, um, it's gonna take you right to the page so you can see the example and you can see the reference. But basically what it is, is it allows me to embed a video at the top of it. I have like a little text blurb letting people know, you know, who I am and what it is that I do. And then it has links to different social media accounts and to creator mix and, you know, other things like that. So if you use something like that, then you can actually use that and send direction or send people from every direction. So you can put that in your links on YouTube. You can put that in your links on uh, TikTok. You can put it in your links on Instagram um, and anywhere else. And when you do that, as people are finding your content for the people that are engaged enough to explore and want more then those people will find those links and then not only will they follow you on youtube but they'll follow you everywhere else you are as well man i'll follow so, you anywhere i'll follow you anywhere so because of that um uh make sure that you are you know just interlinking things um you know if you can but at the very least if you're just trying to get everybody over to youtube then just make sure that you're linking to your youtube channel from everywhere and in your videos on TikTok, which again, you know, I would just respect the platform and, you know, make the content for the platform and, you know, let people enjoy it there. But if you are, you know, 
bent on trying to get people over, then in that case, you know, you could have a little thing that comes up with like your YouTube URL, or you could say, you know, make sure you follow me here and over on YouTube or, you know, something like that in your videos. Next up on the list, D, we've got number 18. We've got English Fun Zone. What is going on? Hope that you are doing great. Um, we've got um, the type of channel is education, teaching English as a second language. The goal of the channel is to make fun and informative English videos and to earn YouTube money. The question is, there's another channel called English Fun Zone, EFZ, not really an uh, English educational channel, but it's been dead for over three years. Do you know if YouTube does any housekeeping on channels, um, not performing, removing them? I know that my channel is being uh, recommended. I'm just curious. I've had to use one English Fun Zone. By the way, um, thanks to all these lessons, my channel's picking up. Thanks. Awesome. Love that. Um, so when it comes to that, yeah, once somebody has the name, um, then, you know, you're kind of kind of stuck in that situation. Somebody reserves your name. That's why it's always best to try to come up with, you know, a, a, a unique name, um, because in that case, one of the things that, you know, you do is you make it to where you can reserve it everywhere. But in your case, you know, you're already, you know, establishing yourself and all of that. Um, so because of that, you just have to take the hit on the other people, you know, having that name. And, you know, if YouTube ever does do anything in the future to where they release it and you and you run across that news, then in that case, you know, I would definitely, you know, I would definitely, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, reach out and, you know, try to claim that name. But uh, but, you know, if if it's not yours, then, uh, you know, then in that case, you, you are, you know, you, you kind of took the L uh, on that one. Yeah, Renee Ritchie, uh, YouTube's creator liaison, um, he also mentioned, he said, um, even if you um, weren't using your channel, if somebody took your name away, um, that you'd be upset about it, right? Because they could be using that to store something, they could just be using it to interact on YouTube, um, you know, to where they might not even be a creator, they might just be a viewer and they have the channel for that reason, you know, those types of things um, as well. So uh, let's see here, next up, we've got um, Her Heel Review. Okay, we did that one already. So next up, we've got Chef Sun Cooks. They upload one time per week or more. Um, they do a cooking slash food channel. The goal of the channel says, I wanna share what I'm cooking and ultimately be a place for valuable food information. The question is, what is something I can do right now that is guaranteed to revive all of my old videos um, and shorts under a thousand views? Some may not be my best work in my head, but I would like to get them much more reach. So here's the thing. If people didn't respond to those videos, technically you could update like a thumbnail for long form videos. You can change the title, things like that. But if people didn't respond to those videos, then in terms of the retention, then unless you do something in the packaging that would cause people's expectation to change as they're clicking into that content, that would then cause them to watch that for a longer period of time um, and just, you know, be satisfied with the content because that's what YouTube's going for. Then in that particular case, you know, those videos um, would, those are gone, right? So you can do stuff, right? Like you can, if you're like, okay, um, I made this video about this, but you know, I was in my learning process and just getting started there. So I tried to make everything super clickbait, even though it was misleading. And because of that, you know, people ex probably expected this type of thing when they came into the video, but I obviously didn't deliver that. So because of that, let me see if I can repackage the video in a way that would make more sense and be a lot more accurate to what it is that they would actually get in the video. You can do stuff like that, you know, that can end up, you know, reviving content and all that. But really what I would focus on in your case is you have those videos on your channel, those are gone. If you do find that some are still getting impressions or you find that you go into retention and some do have great retention, but you just couldn't get people to click or something like that, repackage those, but um, but make sure that you are looking at the retention on those. And then I would just focus on the next videos and, and moving, forward, uh, moving forward that way. Um, next up, we've got... Learn Spanish world. What's going on? Hope you're doing great. Happy New Year. They do educational content. The goal of the channel is providing a wide range of Spanish learning videos while I try hard to do this full time. And the question is, Mickey Mouse, Steamboat Willie specifically, is now in the public domain. Can you use this character by adding them to your videos? I'm a bit scared because two years ago I got a copyright strike over a really old song, which is also in the public domain. Even though it was a song performed by myself, my guitar and my voice, I'm wondering if the same thing could happen with Mickey. Uh, greetings, amigos. So um, technically, you should be able to, but 
you know, when it comes to things like that, because I know um, D was actually telling me um, about that being in public domain now. Um, he was also telling me that they got an extension on it, you know, in the past. Um, so because of that, you know, if it was me, I wouldn't do it yet. But if you wanted to and you wanted to give it a shot, I mean, you know, you're welcome to at, at least how things stand now. But I don't know if any of that's going to change or anything like that. So because I'm paranoid about that kind of stuff, because just like you, I put a lot of work into this and I don't want to do things in my video content that would cause an issue, you know, for me in the future. So because of that, you know, if it was me, I would just avoid it because in reality, outside of you doing like a voiceover of, you know, one of the cartoons or something like that, um, uh, you got to think like what value, you know, would I really be able to get out of this? Technically, you could translate it, you know, um, for, for what it is that you do specifically, but I would just try to find something else. Um, and then that way you don't have to really, you know, worry about it too much. So it doesn't become a, a, a risk, right? because you always wanna minimize you know, your risk in every situation if you can. So Lazarus Reacts is our next channel. They upload every other day. Um, they do anime reactions. The goal of the channel is to make a community of people who uh, all enjoy anime. The question is, when is a good time to start publishing things such as Patreon, hoping to get one started before the end of the year? So you can start publishing um, Patreon. Uh, you can add buy me a coffee or Ko-Fi to your descriptions. You can start doing those sorts of things at any time, but it's helpful if you are already getting some type of activity. So if you have just a tip jar, something like a buy me a coffee or Ko-Fi, then those, as people find them, they can go in there and they can donate to those things. But when it comes to Patreon, you can have a tier to where it's just a support tier that you, you don't do anything in exchange and you you can have that as an option too. Um, but when it comes to Patreon, the real win with Patreon is that you can provide additional things for your viewers. It might be access to you. It might be that if you're an artist that you you know mail stuff, it might be that you do dedicated videos for there. It might be that you do live streams there to where you interact with people. Lots of different ways that people use Patreon. But the thing that you wanna think about is like, if I'm gonna be using that, yeah, I can do a support tier, but it would just be just as easy for me to do a buy me a coffee or something like that. Um, but if I do do a Patreon, then one, at scale, would the work that I would be putting into that now be worth somebody, you know, uh, would that work be worth the few people that I might be able to get in there right now if you don't have a lot of activity on your channel? When it comes to these types of things, I love um, when creators do add additional monetization options to what it is that they're doing, because, you know, you never know when that next video is going to take off. You never know when, you know, you are going to have just a super engaged fan that's going to love everything you do. And they're going to, you know, you know, uh, you know, support you in whatever way it is that they choose to do it. But, um, uh, uh, because I do, you know, support that idea, I would say, get something in there. Um, but the thing I would focus on the most is okay how do i you know make content that really serves my audience how do i get them to you know respond to this you know when i publish these videos how do i how can i get the best you know response possible and really the other side of that is like how can i create the best possible piece of content for the people that are going to be experiencing this how can i help them identify it and how can i you know just keep serving the people that are interacting with my content like i would focus on that to get the ball rolling so that you do have scale and then when you have that scale then i I would start thinking about okay uh, now i'm going to you know deploy like a patreon to where i might be able to add additional content to it content to it and things like that because i know that one of the things that content creators struggle with is time because a lot of people they have their job or their business or school and you know things like that plus they have families and uh, or friends and social lives and all those things and then you have youtube so if you start adding the additional things, then you also have those things that you have to maintain. And once you start having a bunch of things that you have to maintain, then you know it can really start requiring a lot of time. So because of that, I would focus on the content, serving your viewers, um, have buy me a coffee or just a support tier on Patreon, but, um, but I wouldn't go aggressive unless you have a lot of activity on your channel and a lot of people that will be going in there. I wouldn't be aggressive about Patreon until you get things to that point. Um, let's we'll see here, next up on our list. And if you're just joining us, just as a heads up, um, what we're talking about is everything related to YouTube. So right now um, I have a form down in the description. So if you have a question about anything it is that you're thinking about YouTube, anything like that, um, or anything that you're struggling with, anything like that, make sure that you put it in the form down in the description because we're answering them in the order that they are received. If you are watching this on Twitter, or you're watching it on LinkedIn or Facebook, um, head over to YouTube because that's where the form is. You might be able to find it maybe on LinkedIn, maybe um, some other places too, but um, YouTube is where the party's at. So if you, uh, you know, are wanting to fully participate there, then make sure that you head over to uh, YouTube. 
So uh, Demon Dro, thank you for the super chat. D's away, so I can't hit the button. Uh, but says, Happy New Year, Nick and D. Um, how do I go from super edgy to a little more mainstream with my content? I'm almost at 600,000 subscribers and I'm trying to clean up a little. Not ready for suit and tie yet. So here's the thing, man. Like what, what you are doing and who you are has gotten you to 600,000 subscribers, right? One of the things, and I mentioned this in the, in the video coming out too, um, one of the things that is a core thing when it comes to YouTube is authenticity, being yourself, right? Being yourself, sharing your opinions, letting people know what you think about things and letting people know what you like and you don't like and letting people know who you are, right? And what you stand for, all that stuff. Like you're crushing all of that, right? I see your videos on YouTube. I see them on TikTok. I, I'll hit you in short sometimes. So like when, when you are publishing your videos to YouTube, um, people are already responding to what it is that you're doing. People like you already. So in my opinion, you should keep doing what it is that you're doing. And I wouldn't like whitewash anything. Like what I would do is I would think, okay, if people are enjoying, you know, my content and people are liking me, then I'm just gonna, I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna keep doing me, <laughs> right? Um, now, a couple things to think about, you know, as a part of that is like, yes, you do have the side of things when it comes to sponsors and things like that about being brand friendly and you know, all of that. But at the same time, like you've got, you know, an archive of content on your channel that is, you know, that, that is the real version, right? So because of that, if you start cleaning things up, then you know all that stuff's still going to be available for you know those people to see when they're looking at your channel and all that so absolutely there are things that you can do just like minor tweaks to where maybe if you want to make your content more accessible to where if somebody's watching it and they have their family around and they're sensitive about what their kids hear and things like that maybe you know if you are using um uh explicit language in your videos and those sorts of things then maybe toning down that kind of stuff but when it comes to everything else it is that you're doing I would, I would just keep doing, I would keep doing that because it's working and I would try to find ways to amplify what it is that you're doing that is working as well. And then when it comes to cleaning things up a little bit, I would, the, the main thing I would focus on really is if you are being, um, you know, very explicit is I would just try to find, you know, um, you know, ways to communicate there. But even with that, man, like I would be like, okay, I'm going to try to clean this up a little bit, but I would be paying really close attention to if that causes an impact at all, because most likely people won't even notice right but that that explicit transparency so to speak is something that people do also respond to so if you look at gary v as an example so one of the things that he does is you know like he'll use in his own content and things like that you know he's fine he's very abrasive in his language in some stages when he's on those he's also very abrasive but he also knows in some environments that that's not the best move so then he'll clean things up in his presentations and in his communication and those so when it comes to you know what it is that you're doing um really man i would just, i would just keep doing you because people like you people like what it is that you're doing they like the content that you're putting out and you have proof positive of that not only here on youtube but you're also doing well on, on I think it's either TikTok or Instagram um, that I run into your content too, but like you're, you're also doing well over there. So because of that, like I would, I would just lean into, you know, what it is that you're, that you're doing, right? Like uh, do you, right? Cause it, that that's working. Um, let's see here. So next up on the list, we've got, um, darker things is our next question really quick. Um, and again, I can't hit the button cause, um, D is out, but podcast creator creators hub, welcome to the Nimenati. When you get the chance, go to nimenvip.com. I'm going to pin it to the screen right here so you can see it. Go to nimenvip.com. It's going to redirect you to our members only Facebook group. So if you are interested in joining the Facebook group, you can do that there. Um, in addition to that, we also have a community discord that is free for everyone. Um, you can access that. Um, Chantel dropped a link here earlier. If you could, Chantel, if you're um, around, if you could drop that in here uh, now. But um, but you can join that. Anybody here, if you're on Discord, can join that. Um, but if you are a channel member and you join that, then there's a special area in there for channel members. Um, and that's the area that I prioritize. So if time's limited, for example, I'll go into there and then I'll go into the, you know, into the, into the main uh, public chat. And, and we've got a great, you know, community of people in there. So if you, you know, are like wanting feedback on something, whatever, um, then, you know, you can, you can get that kind of stuff in there. So uh, next up, we've got darker things, darker things says, um, let's see here. Oh, it's Ash. Okay. What's up, dude. Hope you are doing awesome. Awesome. You, did you start a new, uh, podcast? Okay. Nice. Love it. So, um, darker things says that uh, they upload when they have time the type of channels documentary true crime disturbing personalities the goal of the channel is to take something i'm interested in and turn it into content people will watch with monetization coming later and the question is 
I'm hit and miss when it comes to people clicking on my videos. I'm starting to think that it's thumbnails, but I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong. Okay, so this is a, this is a, a, a very common problem, especially when you're getting started. So what you wanna think about is when it comes to click-through rate on your videos, here's, here's what is gonna impact that. One is the topic itself. So you might make a great thumbnail and have a great title, but if the topic is something that is of lower interest to the people that you are reaching, then in that case, you're not gonna have a lot of people clicking on it, even though you might've done all the right things with the thumbnail and the title, because you blew it kind of at the topic, right? Or you limited, it, I won't say you blew it. You limited it at the topic. Um, and then when it comes to your thumbnail and title, those obviously also you know impact your click-through rate. And then your autoplay. So basically, if you look on a phone um, or you know on a computer, um, but if you look on a phone, it's a little bit more obvious. Where if you stop the scroll, then YouTube will just start auto playing the video. That's also going to have you know some impact as well. Um, so what you want to think about if you are having trouble getting people to click is one start start being very intentional about everything it is that you're doing with your thumbnails and titles and the topic. And the way that you do that, and I mentioned this a little bit earlier in the stream as well, but the way that you do that is you say to yourself, okay. For the people that I'm trying to reach, first, try to think about who it is that you're actually trying to reach with your content as a whole. And then when you're publishing a piece of content, or even at the ideation stage, think to yourself, okay, how much of my audience is going to be interested in this? Like, how, you know, what's like, is there going to be a large portion of my audience that's going to be interested in this? Or is there going to be a subsegment of my audience that's interested in this? Um, figure that out. Try to go wide when you can. Um, in addition to that, then when you are putting your thumbnail together, think to yourself, okay, what about this thumbnail? If I wasn't familiar with the video, I had no idea what was in the video, what about this thumbnail would help me identify that this piece of content is something that I might care about? Or what, what about this would help the viewers identify that? And then once you figure that out and keep working on it until you can nail that part, and then from there, you think about, okay, with this title, what about this title would compel somebody that I'm trying to reach or myself, you know, if you're trying to reach yourself, um, what would compel them to click on this? And then you also wanna look for little nuance things too, like, okay, um, is the bulk of the information that would matter to the viewer towards the front of the title within the first like 50 to 60 characters? If the answer is yes, then in that case, you know, you're, you're doing the right thing. And then of course you want to just make sure that you are defining what specifically about your topic title and thumbnail is compelling enough that it would cause somebody to click on it. Then you want to run through the quick exercise. Technically T what is going on my man? Hope that hey. you are doing fantastic. Welcome to the stream. But the next thing that you want to, uh, the next thing that you want to work on, um, Ash, I'm going to put it on the stream uh, or on the screen for you here. But the next thing that you want to think about from there is, is there anything that I'm putting in my thumbnail or my title that is going to distract someone or that's going to pull attention away from the main focal points that I'm trying to bring attention to. So a great example of this for titles is, am I putting episode numbers at the beginning of my title? Um, am I putting, uh, you know, something at the beginning of the title that is like the theme of, you know, this series that I'm working on? Those types of things should be at the end of your title, not in the front, because they block the most important, you know, they, they block the messaging, so to speak, at the beginning of the title. When it comes to your thumbnails, simple is usually better. So when it comes to your thumbnails, you know, some people will put like subscribe buttons in their thumbnails, and some people will fill the entire thumbnail with like a hundred words of text. Some people will have, um, like a friend of mine, right? So I have a friend of mine, he um, started a YouTube channel recently. Um, he just crossed a thousand subscribers on his YouTube channel. And one of the messages that I sent to him uh, was make the drum bigger based on his thumbnail, right? So basically it's a thumbnail and in and, and, and his thumbnail it says it's time. And then it's a picture of him and he's holding a drum. I think it's a snare drum. But I took a screenshot on my phone and I sent it to him. And I said, make the drum bigger because that's the thing that's gonna grab somebody's attention that's a drummer, right? It's gonna help them identify that even at a small size that it has something to do with drums. Two, um, I mentioned that the drum is hard to make out at a small size. And then I said, um, you're not going, to, oh, this is a, a whole other thing. Um, but then uh, let's see here. Do, 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 do. Oh yeah, and I said to, um, instead of the um, it's time that he has in the thumbnail, instead to try Hey Drummers, if he was going to use text in the thumbnail. So basically the whole thing is like, is there anything that's kind of getting in the way of the, of the thing that you're trying to bring attention to, right? So you wanna think about all of those things when you're putting your thumbnails and titles together and just when you're packaging it up in general um, so that you can make sure that you're giving yourself the, you know, the, best, uh, you know, the best move there. New member, Old Country Off-Road. Welcome to the Niminati. Make sure when you get the chance, 
Welcome to the Nimanati. Did you see her real review, by the way? Make sure when you get the chance that you go to nimanvip.com. That's going to redirect you to our Facebook group if you're interested in joining that. And we also have a Discord that's free to everyone. Um, uh, but there is a, a special members-only area in there as well. Um, did you get the super chat from her real review? Doug um, said you missed it. Yeah, I don't think I did. I just put it up on the screen right now. Um, my, my screen's super small. So. Okay, it says how to research film-related videos record on watch page uh, how to research film re film related videos record on watch page does that make sense to you no so how to research uh, uh film, -related, film videos. related videos that makes sense but record on watch page yeah i'm not sure yeah can you rephrase yeah, if, the yeah, question if you, could be, if you could be a little bit more clear on that um we'll keep an eye out in the chat there um for that did you Chris, get demon row christina yeah okay. christina smallhorn in the house what's hey, going on christina. happy new year hope you're doing great Nice to see you in here. Happy New Year. Um, let's see here. Oh, recommended. Got it, got it, got it. Okay. Recommended. So um, let's see here. So let me go back down to that. So how to um, search film-related videos on recommended on homepage. Okay. So got it. Okay. So when it comes to um, researching film-related videos on the homepage, I wouldn't necessarily do that. Um, instead, um, I would be going into Google Trends. Like if you're doing film-related you know, reviews, I would go into Google Trends and I would look for um, uh, any movies that are on the rise of people's interests. So if you go to trends.google.com, you're going to see, uh, you know, how, if you go to trends.google.com, you put in the movie name, you're going to see, okay, is has this movie peaked and it's on its way down? Um, what movies are still climbing? Um, is there just a general interest to where it's relatively steady? Like maybe it's like a, like something, uh, you know, like Fight Club or something like that where people are still like interested in watching it. Um, and then, uh, and then, use that tool to help you just get a better understanding of the right videos to make that is good for you know people that are interested in watching film reviews and then another thing that you can do and this is where you know understanding the nuance of your audience is important is you might find in your content that maybe uh, let's say you know sci-fi does better than everything else or romance does better than everything else um, in that particular case once you identify that within your own content then you would say okay well I'm gonna go look for sci-fi movies or I'm gonna go look for romance movies that type of thing um, to where you can use Use that particular tool again it's trends.google.com to get a good understanding of the likelihood of there being a decent amount of people that are going to be interested in that piece of content that you're going to publish hey nikki how you doing so doing I, well. so i wouldn't do it right off of the home page um i would actually get ahead of that on uh on trends instead because you know sometimes you're you're being presented content on your home page that's years old sometimes it's you know months old weeks old things like that so you know in some cases you could just miss the boat on some of that stuff Darker Things is our next question. We did that one already, though. So we're over in 24D is where we're at. So uh, Lisa likes plants. By the way, if you have questions, head down to the description. There is a link to a form. You can ask your question in the form. Yep, it's all free. Thanks to our sponsors, uh, TubeBuddy and StreamYard yep. um, as well. But Lisa Likes Plants, um, they have been making videos for one year or more. It's a gardening channel. The goal of the channel is education. And the question is, can you talk about quality versus quantity? I feel like I can make my videos higher quality, but it will take me probably 30% longer. This will reduce the videos that I can put out by that much time, and I'm not sure it's worth it. I would like to put videos out once a week, but they would be lower quality than every two weeks. So great question. If you're also dealing with this question, just say me um, in the chat, um, because this is a really common one when it comes to content creators. So when you are looking at quality versus quantity um, the very first thing to understand is that that quality is always determined by the viewer so for you when you're putting your content together you might find that when you're putting it you know together that uh, you know that extra time it may help the video but it might not make a difference either so one thing that I found a long time ago is I would spend tons of time just on little nuanced things. And don't get me wrong, like I was proud of those videos, right? And I was proud of that work that I put in. I was proud of the little details that I put in that nobody even noticed. But one thing that I started doing is I started scraping out things over time. I'm like, okay, let me lose, use just like a little bit less B-roll. Let me use just a little bit less graphics. Maybe if I have a graphic on here, maybe instead of doing multiple layers of graphics that I'm gonna animate, maybe I'll just put one thing and then just have like a slow zoom or a slow you know, pan or something like that going into that. 
and then I started looking for ways that I could remove the sum, not all, because I still, you know, add some of those details, but I would remove just like some of the little details. And what I found was that as long as the video was structured right, and as long as I was giving people what they expected when they came into the video, yes, the graphics do help and they do help, you know, keep people's attention and all that stuff. But how you're actually structuring your video and taking people through your story or through the information, like that's the stuff, because you're doing educational content. That's the stuff that matters the most. So because of that, what I recommend that you do is make one of those videos that you think is going to be a much higher quality video. Uh, make a few of them if you want to. Even if it takes you a little bit more time, publish those videos, and then compare those videos against your videos that have, you know, that, that didn't require as much work and see if there's a difference for what it is that you're putting together, how you're putting it together for the people that are interacting with your content. See if it makes a difference at all. It might, or it might not. And if you can at least prove one way or the other, then that will at least give you a lead on what to do next. But even if you do more work, once you find, okay, people are responding more to this then every two weeks might be the path if it makes a substantial difference. Or you can also go that way and then do what I did again, where you just start slowly taking away things to kind of find that threshold on what exactly it is that you need to do to a video. Now, here's the thing that's going to cook your noodle. Is that what she says or bake your noodle? In the matrix? Yeah. Now, this is going to bake your, oh, bake your bake, noodle. Yes, it's going to bake is your noodle. Is it bake your noodle or cook your noodle? Bake your noodle. Okay, bake your noodle. Yeah, I think. So here's oh, the thing that's going to bake your noodle. Now. Since you're doing educational content, uh, one thing that's really interesting with educational content is in some cases, you just got to talk and you just got to share the information. And just by doing that by itself, yeah, bake your noodle. the videos will do fine, right? As long as they're structured right, as long as you're taking people through, as long as you're meeting the expectation that you set up from the outside through your packaging, sometimes those videos do fine. So because of that experiment, right? See if, see if that extra work will get you better results because sometimes it does. See if that extra work will get you better results. Um, and then I would make your call, you know, from that. So with that, let's take this as a learning thing for everybody here is that when you are in a situation like this where you're like, man, if I, if I put in just a little bit more time, then maybe it's going to cause me to be able to upload less videos. But I think I'll be able to make something that's really good that people will respond to better. Take the time and experiment with it, right? Let's try it and see if it's gonna work. If you have an idea, like like ideas and experimentation on YouTube, like that's where all the gold is, right? That's that's where you find like the the really big wins on your path. Is if you if you're like, okay, um, maybe if I spent this extra time, um, then people would enjoy it better. Spend that extra time, and if they enjoy it better, then that might be the thing that you need to do. Or that will show you that like, hey, I'm spending this extra time, but it doesn't seem to make a difference. It just seems to be more based on like the topic, or if I can get people to rewind or stop at a particular point in the video, and you know, things like that, you'll start identifying other things, you know, that can make a difference too. So, you know, if you do have ideas about things that you can do, just run it through this simple filter. Is this video a good fit for the people that I'm trying to reach with this content, my intended audience? If the answer is yes, do all kinds of experiments around that. If it means that you have to have, you know, a couple weeks where you upload at a slower pace so that you can experiment with making those videos that you think might be better, do it because you might be onto something, right? Go. Yep. Yeah, I, I want to add to this, um, and I blanked out during some of that because oh, you were, that's fine. Yeah, you were just, speaking for like 18 minutes, yeah, and yeah. I, I was just hey, thinking man, about, yep. you had me looking up the Matrix and stuff. Mm -hmm. So in terms of, because you said- We were almost just going to watch the movie. We were. Right? We were, we're, we're just we're, copyright we're like, claim. Yeah, just, we were like walking down that path. Yeah. I was looking You're up- You're like, I was man, gonna, he's still going? Like, I was going to start streaming it. Yep. Yeah. So You're going to be like, man, we're going to be at the architect by the time he's done with this. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. So in terms of, and I'm reading your question here, it says it would probably take me 30% longer mm -hmm. to make my videos higher quality. Yep. I want to be very clear that fancy editing doesn't make higher yeah, quality. Yeah. Fancy editing doesn't make higher quality. What makes higher quality is how the audience responds to it, right? right. So think in terms of, uh, you know, if I make it better, right? To make something better means that you're communicating with the audience better. That's what it really means. Mm -hmm. That means that it's creating a better experience. You're creating a yep. better overall experience for the person that's watching your video. That, that, I mean, it can be filmed with your phone, with the microphone that's on the phone. Yep. Because what you say and how you say it and the way you connect with that person that watches the video could be everything. Yep. Versus a ten thousand or fifteen or fifty thousand dollars studio yep. with all the lights, all the microphones, yep. multi-camera angles, the best yep. soundtracks, the best editors. Why do I feel like you're talking about me here? The best 
the best shaking I think he's getting ready text to say that I comes suck. on, right? You can have all of this stuff and your videos could suck because they miss a deeper connection to your audience. Yep. So in terms of better, that doesn't mean necessarily lights. It doesn't necessarily mean the cameras. It doesn't, it means how you connect with the viewer. Yep. So focus on that connection first and foremost. I mean, and that's not an easy answer. Yeah. yeah it, you know, it's just like connect with the viewer. That's really hard. We all struggle with that. It doesn't matter yep. how long you're on the platform. The biggest creators on the platform still struggle with how to do that. Yep. So I think more in terms of how can I say the right things? How can I tell my story? How can I convey my message? How can I better communicate in the video? Think about that in terms of better. Yep. The, the, the audience decides if it's quality or not. Yep. Right. As creators, we make the best things that we can make with the tools we have at our uh, disposal at the time, yep. with the knowledge and the experience that we have. We put it out into the world and the world decides if it's quality or not. Yep. That's all you can do. And really quick also, I, I, I want to mention Christina Smallhorn right here. And, and this is a great um, example of doing what you want to do versus doing what's best for the viewers that are interacting with your content. So Christina here, who, by the way, for everybody that's hanging out in the chat right now, she has almost 300,000 subscribers. Um, the video that she put out two weeks ago has got like 71,000 views on it. Video that she put out a month ago has got almost 30,000. Another month ago, 174,000. Like she's doing great. And one of the things that she mentions here is that she loves the she fancy edit, yeah. but her audience doesn't. Right. So because she's prioritizing what her audience wants and what her audience, you know, prefers, she's thriving. Right. You got to say that. It. Yeah. So that expresses yeah. that that idea that he was talking about yeah. in terms of like, you know, you got to you got to do what's what's best for the viewer. Not necessarily. I mean, there is pride. There is that. Like, hey, pride. I want my stuff to be like cool okay. or whatever. But then there's also like, OK, well, how can I just make the best thing for, you know, for the for the people that are interacting with my content? And there's a really weird thing that happens. And those of you who have been creating for a while and you've built up your various skills, you probably know what I'm talking about. Once you've learned how to make something a certain way, you understand white balance, you understand framing, you understand how to make a set look good, you understand the lighting, you understand all of these things, all of these things, and you have this, what your idea is of something that looks good in your head. Mm -hmm. Like this looks good. Yep. It's difficult then to walk it backwards. Yeah. And you're like, hey, I've built all of this stuff and it looks, maybe too professional. Mm -hmm. Maybe this is too professional for TikTok. Yep. And then you want to dial it back and it's it becomes hard. difficult yeah. because your brain is wired. To be like, oh, it's not good enough. It's, it's got to look this way. Yeah, this yeah. looks like crap. Right. And then you upload it anyway and you're like, huh, I got a million views on that. Right. I just front facing camera on my phone that had a dust speck on it. Dude, you know what's it, funny? Speaking of TikTok, some of my yeah. best TikTok videos yeah. Are literally, I'm not on camera, which no, is probably too. the big benefit, but I'm literally, it's like messy. Yeah. There's like no, it's just kind of like, oh, hey, no, here's I, this, here. It's all like one take. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, those are my best yeah. TikTok videos. All, all my top, crazy. all my TikTok yeah. videos are made on my phone, yeah. uh, front facing camera. All my shorts are done on my phone. Um, yeah, food for thought is what we're getting food at. for thought yeah, yeah you have yeah. to test it on the flip side of that christina says she's like yeah i know somebody that has a red camera yeah. which those are like thousands and thousands of dollars and they get like 200 views a video yeah yep yeah and this is true too um jason says it's too easy to lean on gear and technical stuff because you lack confidence in yourself yeah Ooh. i ouch. love that man Ooh. yeah that, that stings a little ow. bit yeah but that you're hurts. right yeah, yeah it is Ab it absolutely is. Yeah. you know but test it you might be to be fair, depending on what it is that you're doing, I do believe in visual authority uh, because yeah. that type of thing, sure. you know, is also different. So depending on what it is that you're doing, you but know, you, there is you that. But might be, the thing is, though, you have to test it and you have yeah. to learn how to do it. I, yep. I, I would say this, Google pattern interrupts. Mm -hmm. Learn what a pattern interrupt is. Mm -hmm. So without becoming super fancy pants, you can still do various pattern interrupts mm -hmm. to hold the viewer's attention. Yep. So pattern interrupt. Yep. Rabbit hole, go down it. Yep. Or be fancy pants. Or be fancy pants. Yeah. I think there's a place for everything. Yeah, sure. Sketches and scrubs, our next uh, question here. Love but your channel name. beats a good hard cut. Right. Sketches so and scrubs. Was that before or after the cigarette burns? <laughs> right? That's right after the cigarette burns. <laughs> so sketches and I scrubs. I said hard cut, boy. <laughs> okay, okay. I didn't say J cut. <laughs> I said hard cut. <laughs> <laughs> So sketches, <laughs> bam. Sketches and scrubs. Okay, no, 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 hard cut. <laughs> hard cut from now on. I'm yeah, sorry. And then I get in the corner and I make a J cut. Right. Yeah. For next yeah. time. Yeah. yeah. 
Sketches. I still get and, those scars. The belt, <laughs> the belt works across the back. Sketches and scrubs. Uh, the type of channel is Christian doctor making art videos, vlogs, mm -hmm. tips, and reviews. The goal of the channel is to help others in their watercolor mixed media art journey, making it fun and easier to navigate, less frustrating, and something that improves their well being. The question is My channel has gradually grown in size from 4,000 to 9.6, but the views per video remain the same. Is that a warning sign? Do I need to change something? If you do ever do channel reviews, I appreciate insights. Okay, so when it comes to the um, views remaining the same, if you are stagnant and you're like, hey, you know, I just have this threshold, then you then you need to change something, right? Like we all do, like that happens to everybody. Yeah. So it's like, you know, you hit the certain point and then you're like, okay, um, what do I need to do in order to get past this point? So you're getting that response because that is the level that people are responding to your content at. So in order to break through that, then yeah, you need to make a change. That change could be a nuance in how, you know, in, in how you're targeting your audience or your understanding of what it is that they even want. Um, that change could be an audience of how you're presenting or a, uh, a, a tweak in how you're presenting the content from the outside to your packaging. It could be a tweak in your video structure somewhere. Um, you know, there there's something that you can change that can that can get you over that threshold. It can also be additional details like, okay, out of my archive here, um, you know, am I sending people into additional content? If somebody watches uh, this video and YouTube starts recommending other content for my channel, is that content also a good fit for that viewer to where if they do come into that, YouTube can count on people watching multiple videos on my YouTube channel, right? Like those types of things are also important. As a matter of fact, that same friend that I was talking about earlier about the, uh, about the thumbnail, another thing that I sent him is I said, hey, um, I would also take out the covers and uh, focus everything on your value content. And I also mentioned to him, because he's got some lo-fi videos on the channel too, and I told him to ditch those too. I'm like, yeah, take off your lo-fi videos too. And the reason for that is because he just had his first video pop. And with that first video, um, he got, I think it's, he's up to like 24, 27,000 views on it. And what's happening there, um, just for you know everybody here, is... He had a video pop. He's got you know twenty four to twenty seven thousand views on that video. So what's going to happen next is that YouTube is going to identify. Okay, people enjoy this. He's got a lot of comments on the video. There's a lot of conversation around the video. You know that kind of stuff. A lot of likes on it. Like people watch the whole thing. Like it was it was a good video. And what's going to happen is YouTube's system is going to say, okay, these people enjoyed this content. So on this channel, what else would be a good fit for these people? And YouTube is going to try to test some of those other videos for him, uh, you know, against those people. So the reason I told him to took the, take those lo-fi videos off and the covers off is because he's he's basically making the channel now into the future. He's making it around, um, you know, helping drummers learn how to be, you know, good at drums. Funky drummers. So, funky drummers. So because of that. Get some. So because of that, for the drummers that are interacting with this content, they're not going to care about just listening to lo-fi, right? At least they're not, they're not going to care about that on his channel, right? Just listening to some lo-fi music. They're not going to care about, you know, the covers that much per se. So because of that, you know, everything is now going to get dialed into the things that that audience cares about. So then when YouTube systems like, hey, you enjoyed this video from this channel, let's see if you like this video too, to where he can present them with another video on his channel that is available that is something that those viewers would care about right that's the idea so when it comes to those those limits you want to make sure like when you're hitting those thresholds you want to make sure that you're thinking about all of those types of things and then there's also what you're willing to do because you know you can also hit thresholds too to where you're like you know um you know this is kind of like the limit that i'm at um and then there's like you know um, i'm already spending time on these things like that like what am i willing to do to get past this. We have a celebrity right? in There's the house. There's that too. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we got Owen Video in the house. What's going on, Owen? Hope Owen that you are doing video. fantastic, my man. Owen What's Video! What's up, man? Oh, I haven't What's going seen on, dude? You. I haven't seen you in forever, man. Haven't talked to you yeah, in forever. Yeah, I got to hug him at Vid Summit. Did you? Yeah. Yeah. Hope yep. you're doing well, man. Yep. Owen's the dude. Yep. Hey, just as a heads up, if you are a business content right, creator, yeah, if you are a real estate agent, if you are a mortgage broker, if you have like any type of like, you know, uh, local business, or you Owen just want to look at you dude. If you look at a handsome dude, yeah. If you want to look at a, just a handsome fella, yeah. Yeah, like Owen. <laughs> Owen is your dude. Like if you are, you know, that type of uh, if you are, you know, that type of content creator, and you are using YouTube for business, um, Owen is uh, is the dude uh, when it comes to that. So make sure that you reach out to him on Twitter, yep. um, there, uh, or if you're on Facebook or you know, something like that, or Instagram. Anyway, he's in all the places. So um, just reach out to uh, Owen Video there, and he will, you know, he can he can help you there. Hold up. 
You just moved to Costa Rica for the win. Listen, man, I love. I, I didn't know you were doing this. Mm -hmm. I love that you moved out of the United States. Listen, nice, love it. Yeah, so I'm, don't well, just do it for the winter. Like, just do it. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. so listen, I, he so, might be trying it though. Yeah. So here, I, I've got. I've lived out of the United States for over twenty years. Yep. So here's the thing: when you move out of, the, I'm, I'm going to walk you through what might happen. When you get out of the country, everything's going to be awesome. Yeah, I can't believe it. I did it. I made the jump and I get mm -hmm. out. There's a there's a thing that happens when you stay gone. Did you go through this? A, a lot of people go through where it's like an amazing, amazing, honeymoon amazing period. You go through the honeymoon period, but then you go through a part where they talk about like culture, like culture shock. Mm -hmm. You don't think like, I don't feel any culture shock, but then when you're in places like Costa Rica or Thailand and, and, and things are just maybe you try to build a house and you're just like, man, I can't get this thing built and the walls are crooked and the toilets right. and, and, the, and the the pipes don't drain correctly and all this stuff. And you start going through this weird position. You're like, I've made a huge mistake. Maybe I'm going to go home to push through. Yep. If you hit that state at that state, it might happen a couple of years from now when you start questioning your judgment, push through it. Yeah. It can be frustrating. It might even get depressing for a little bit mm -hmm. because you start questioning your judgment and like, man, I can't. That's all culture shock. I it's yeah, all, Google, car, Google culture shock. Yeah, yeah you'll... culture shock actually comes later for a lot mm -hmm. of people. So if yep. you hit that later, push through it. Yep. It gets better. Mm -hmm. I know that was kind of a weird rant, but yeah. do you agree weird with that? Weird side panel there for yeah, YouTube yeah, 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 stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's like honeymoon period. And then it's just kind of, you go through this weird thing sometimes and you push through it and you come out and you're just like, ah, oh, yep. I'm, I'm, I'm okay now. Yep. Went through it. Nervax, what's going on? Hope yeah. you're doing great. Yeah. That's so that, awesome. That's you pretty took cool. that leap, dude. Yeah. Yep. Congratulations. Exciting stuff, man. Yeah, Exciting it is. stuff. Yeah, that's super cool. Yeah. So uh, next up on our list here, uh, we've got Shark Scrapper. What's up, dude? Hope hey, you're doing Shark great. Um, and, and hey, really quick, um, OwenVideo.com. Or is it, what did he say in there? Did he say uh, Owen Video? Yeah, if you, if you see that in there. Let yeah, this is true. Yeah, OwenVideo.com um, is how you is how you find Owen if you do have a business related channel. He helps you set up like lead magnets all stuff, and all that man. stuff. Like he turned your channel into like a lead generating machine. But uh, OwenVideo.com. English Fun Zone, and this is so true, says, and you have the reverse culture shock when you go back to the United States. Yeah, this I feel is like true. a tourist there. It's weird. Yeah, so yeah. I, don't, I don't know exactly when it happened, but it took a while. It took me several years of being out of the United States and not going to the United States regularly. Mm -hmm. But now when I, and this is really weird, born and raised in the United States. Yep. But I've been gone for like 20 years or so. Right. When I go back to that's the That's crazy. That's Just crazy. Just thinking about that. Yeah. yeah. Dude, in, 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 in like four more years, I would have spent half of my life right. out of the United States. Right. But technically, when you spend all the, if you take the time. If you're I, doing the math, just say me in the comments. Yeah. So, but if you take the time, like, okay, I spent this time in Colombia, this time in, like, if you take all that, mm -hmm. I've probably already spent half of my life yeah. outside the United yeah. States. Yeah. Right. Because you've been, yeah, you've been traveling since you were like 20. I've been out for a long time. Right. Yeah. So just say half of my life has been in the United States. When I go back, I feel like I'm going to. Uh, foreign country, a foreign country, yeah. a you know, a really weird foreign country. Mm -hmm. It feels like I'm going to like a reality show, a yeah. TV, a reality TV show. Yeah. Y'all is weird is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> you guys are weird. Yeah, it's just different. Get you know, it just, together yep. over there, man. It's weird. <laughs> That's so what I'm trying uh, to say. back on track, Shark Scrapper um, is our next question. <laughs> they do. Inter he does entertainment. Uh, the He does entertainment content. The goal of the channel is to promote recycling um, and add a revenue stream to the business. The question is, one of my plans for 2024 is to improve my use of shorts. Is there a recommended ratio of shorts versus long form content? Any other lessons learned or recommendations for adding shorts um, to primarily long form content channel? Looking forward to an awesome 2024. Yeah. So what you want to do is um, just just look at your short shelf and your long form video as two two different things right so imagine that they are two different apps so to speak yes they work together yes youtube can recommend content you know to people that are interacting with both and all that but you want to look at it like like they're like two different things so to speak yes it still needs to be targeted towards the same people but you want to look at them um as like they're not you know directly attached to either, each other so because of that just upload the shorts at a cadence that you can you know support but um with your shorts i would would not publish a short um, on the days that you do upload your long form videos though, just so you can focus on that long form video, right? Getting everything ready there, engine your comments, you know, all that stuff. So that can be your, you know, busy thing for the day, so to speak. So, um, uh, so yeah, just upload shorts at whatever cadence you're comfortable with. And, uh, and then when it comes to the long form content, just don't upload them on that day so that you can just focus on, you know, the, the servicing that long form video, so to speak on, on those days. Cruising Miles, thank you for the super chat. Super appreciate it. Says, um, in the past chat. couple of years, I've been implementing things that I've learned from this channel, and I think that we've all 
Hold on. And I think I've been doing well, but I still feel like I'm lacking something that is keeping me from really gaining traction. Do you do channel reviews? So we're not doing um, we're not doing channel reviews during this stream, but I am going to start doing channel reviews again over on the Tube Spanner YouTube channel. So um, I know that your name right here is Cruz and Miles. If you could just connect with me on like Twitter DMs or something like that, um, because I know that with your you know super chat here, you're kind of hoping that I would pull you up here. Um, when we start doing channel reviews on the Tube Spanner channel, which is either going to be this coming week or next week, because I'm going to start doing the monetization, you know, live streams and stuff like that on my channel too. Um, but when we uh, start doing that over there. If you can come into one of those streams um, and just remind me of this, then um, then I'll, I'll pull you up over there and then I'll check you out over there. Because normally we do it as like a randomized thing, but since we're not doing them here because you drop 50 bucks and it's 50 bucks, right? So because of that, if you do that, then I'll, I'll, I'll pull you up over there when we do that. Owen says, uh, where's your favorite? This is a great question for everybody. Uh, everybody in the chat, where, if you're in the US, where's your favorite outside US place to go? Here, I love Thailand. Okay. Absolutely love it. Okay, love everything about Thailand. Okay, I even like the traffic and okay. the crazy driving. Yeah, okay. I like the fact that when you're walking down the sidewalk in some scenarios, that you have to be careful because you might have a motorbike coming up behind you. Mm. I like that. Yeah, I think in terms of living, uh, I would have to put Thailand at the top of my list as well. It's chaotically pleasant. Yeah. Um, especially up here in northern Thailand, and where we're at is incredibly safe. Like I. No, no joke. Like I could, we we could go to I don't know a cafe tomorrow, mm -hmm. and I could put my phone and my laptop and my my satchel on a table, and we could go watch a movie yep. at the mall yep. and come back, and it's all going to be there, and it's all going to still be there. Yep. No joke. Yep. I, I I sometimes leave my keys in my motorbike overnight. Yep. Sometimes mm -hmm. yep. outside, they're yep. still there. Mm -hmm. I, I'll leave I'll, the parking at the mall. I leave it in the, it's still there. Right. It's it's so safe up here. It's it's un. Believable. So right. I would say for living Thailand, for visiting, I'm going to have to say, for vac or for just for like being a tourist, I'd have to say Japan, Iceland. Yeah, Japan's cool. Yeah, Japan, Iceland, Nepal, India, and Cuba. Those are probably my top five nice. for visiting. Nice. You have a top one for vacationing? Um, <clears throat> yeah, I would say probably Japan. Maybe. Yep. I liked Indonesia a lot too. Oh yeah, I really liked Bali. Yeah, really like Bali. It, cool. it's, it's a lot of crossover with Thailand. Yeah, but uh, but I really liked I really like the vibe there. It's different now, but uh, but at the time that we went there, um, I, I really yeah. enjoyed that. Yeah. Ty, what's going on? Ty's hot mess history. Hope you're doing great. Hey. So um, let's see here. So next up, um, let's see here. Any other lessons? Okay, we did the short thing. Okay, so now we're on number twenty-seven, and we're uh, trucking along here. <laughs> so next up, we've got waiting for the page to load. Drum roll. Okay, here we go. So John Ben uh, Bednez, hope I'm saying that correctly. I apologize, John, if I'm uh, not. They do bi-weekly content. They've been on YouTube for a year or more. The type of channel is indie game and Unity 3D uh, edutainment. The goal of the channel is indie game development, getting to a thousand subscribers by the end of the year. And the question is, when would be a good time within a video to bring awareness to a personal website? Great question. Mm, that's a fantastic so question. There's a, there's a few different ways that you can do this. Um, so the very first is introduce yourself from that website. So as long as the website aligns with, you know, what it is that you're doing, um, you could say like, you know, if it was me, I'd be like, Hey, I'm Nick from Nick Nimmin.com or Hey, I'm Nick from TuberTools.com or Hey, I'm Nick from PadPlanet.com or you know, like whatever. Um, hey, uh, and today we're some... talking about, you know, this, right. Oops. Um, or you could say, uh, you know, once you get through the hook, um, then, you know, once you introduce yourself, if that's something you do in your videos, then you could just have a little lower third that pops up where you don't even say anything, but you have your name on there. And then you have a little, you know, thing underneath your name that also displays your website there. You can do that also. Um, other people will wait to the end of the video, but if you are trying to spread awareness about something that you are doing, then hitting having multiple touch points in a video is the win. So having that little lower third, and if you're not familiar with what a lower third is, D, we put me on this uh, one camera here. Yep. So what a lower third is, is imagine there was a graphic on the screen right now, and that, there we go, that's a lower third. So uh, so basically having something like that, but they have cooler, you know, things where it's just more simple because that's like a, you know, kind of in your face graphic. But um, but they have it where you can just put, you know, like your name and then, you know, some text underneath your name. But for that text, you could say, like, visit my website at, you know, whatever. And you don't even have to say anything then. So you're spreading awareness about it for the people that are watching the video and paying attention to that particular part. Other things that you can do really quick. The reason it's called a lower third is because it takes up the lower third of the, the lower third of the screen. Mm -hmm. So if you were to segment your screen like this, the lower third would be in one of the lower left or right hand sides. Yep. 
Um, um, another thing that you can do is if you do have, because you're doing game development content, which means I'm, or which it makes me think that you're probably sending people to a website that has something to do with that. So another thing that you can do is if you're doing any type of like screen sharing, anything like that, it's really subtle. This one isn't really like awareness thing. It's more of just like a small one is you can also have like your bookmark bar, bar showing to where you have like one of your folders named your website and then nosy people will look for that. Um, you can also do things to where, you know, you might reference something and mention that it's on your website, or you can take the really aggressive approach. The really aggressive approach is to where later in your video, you don't want to do this at the very beginning because people will abandon the video for it. But if you do have something, if it's a guide of some kind, if it's a checklist of some kind for people that are developing games, any type of free resource that you could create to where you would be able to mention it somewhere in your video to where it's like, let's say if there's something that you talk about on a regular basis, you could say, oh, hey, by the way, um, I have a guide for this um, that you can download for free on my website, blah, blah, blah. But anyway, and then keep going that way. So you can also do those sorts of things, which are really subtle, but it gets the information out there and then it spreads awareness about your uh, about your website. And then some people will just put, you know, like, like you know, graphics on their end screens and that kind of stuff. Um, but, you know, there's a, there's a nice handful of ways that you can do that. But, um, but I would wait on the aggressive stuff until it's later in your video, like the last like 20% of your video or something like that, so that you don't sacrifice the performance of the video for that, you know, the handful of people that are going to go over there. Instead, focus on the performance of the video so that the video can do well, so you can reach more people at scale. And then out of those people at scale, more people are going to make it to later in the video. And then you'll get more people going over to your website from there. So hopefully that helps. Congratulations to About Damn Time who just received their first subscriber. Nice. Congratulations to you for that. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. High five and fist bump to you for that very first subscriber. Yep, yep, Love it. Yep. So next up, we've got, we're on number uh, 28 now, D. All right. So next up, we've got Weeby Craft. They have been on YouTube for one year or more. They do Minecraft gaming content. The goal of the channel is to get more brand deals and money. money. The question is, money. The question is, my channel is focused on Minecraft content, but recently Minecraft uh, video views dropped and uh, views are dropping and GTA video views are increasing compared to the past. Should I start uploading GTA on my channel? So right now with GTA, um, there is a lot going on with GTA because they're, you know, they have like, uh, you know, screenshots link leaked and, you know, they have officially announced that they're rolling out, uh, you know, the next one, uh, number six here, I think in 2025. So as we start approaching that, that the awareness and the attention that that's going to get is going to keep increasing. So because of that, if you're only focused on nothing more than I'm just trying to make videos that are going to get more views, if that's the only thing that you're like really focused on, then in that case, yeah, I would start, I would start, you know, heading in, in that particular direction because you'll be positioning yourself now as one of the, you know, one of the resources for that particular thing, as long as people respond well to the content. So yeah, I would start walking in that direction if that's something that you're interested in, because you got two things that you're dealing with here. One is do I chase the traffic, right? Which I mean, you are publishing videos and if you want people to watch those and you wanna get brand deals and money, I mean, that's kind of the, the, the path. But then you also have like, well, what I really like making videos about, right? And what is that I'm really ultimately trying to accomplish with this channel? If that can be done with Minecraft, and if that's something that you wanna continue doing, you can absolutely do that. But if you're like, hey, I just wanna go and ride this wave, then yeah, then in that case, yeah, I would definitely start, uh, if I had a gaming channel, and the only thing I was trying to do is grow the channel and get like more ad revenue and stuff, um, then in that case, I would definitely start, you know, moving. <clears throat> Excuse me. You're I would right. start, yeah, I would definitely start Jeez. moving. Can't take you anywhere. I know, right? I would start moving in the direction of uh, of GTA. And uh, Christina Small Horse, uh, Small Horse. <laughs> Sorry about that, uh, dude. Yeah, I'm falling apart over here. I need to hydrate. Give me yeah. one second, D. Go. Holy moly! He's over here burping on screen. <laughs> Con Christina Small Horse. <laughs> what is going on, dude? Ooh. What? What? Pull it together, man. <laughs> Come on. Oh, that was great. Love it. Sorry, Christina. What, so, uh, what are you even doing? I know, here? right? She says, uh, uh, will you have any courses coming out um, in 2024? I bet everyone in this chat would buy it. Yes. Yeah, it's about ponies. Yep, it's about ponies. <laughs> if you want to if you want to uh, pony up and pay for it. Uh, <laughs> yes, Christina, um, I will. And it will be uh, it will be coming out uh, very soon. Yeah, I'm actually working through it right now. Um, so basically, Part of my work week is um, basically working on up. working on my stuff there, and then um, also uh, also doing stuff for the course as well. So yeah, it's on the way. 
you're never going to recover from calling her, calling her calling small, small horse. horse. It's never. Right? She's never going to come back in the chat. Yeah, just yeah. shut up. Just stop talking. Yeah, it's we've over. already got the creator classroom putting horse heads yeah. in the, uh, just in stop the thing here. Yeah, just stop. We need to have a moment of silence for this, this live stream because it was dead uh, at that moment exactly. Oh, love it. Love it, love it, love it. All right. <laughs> so next up. Um, we've oh, got that's hilarious. We've got Camp Brood. We, we love you, Christina. Yeah, she knows. It, you and your horse. <laughs> yep. you, 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 and, you and the small horses. Yeah. yeah. We love you and the horse you rode in yeah. on. Yeah. 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 <laughs> oh, man. Whew. Okay. All right. So uh, Giddy Camp up. Brood. Giddy up. Let's get moving. Yep. Camp Brood <laughs> says that uh, the type of channels RVing and hiking, uh, the national parks with family. The goal of the channel is to help families plan outdoor road trip vacations. And the, uh, let's see here. She says, um, I actually like the new uh, nickname team, Small Horse. We, we, <laughs> should like just, we should just say everyone's names wrong. <laughs> yeah, right? We should Turn have it. one stream where we secretly do that. Yeah, That'd yeah, be yeah. funny. Yeah. So, yeah. So, Camp, yeah. So, if you see us doing that because you're here watching this stream, you know what's going on. Yeah. So, uh, let's see here. So, Camp Brood, um, they do, they help, the goal is to help plan, uh, mm. families plan outdoor road trip vacations. The question is, I have three videos I'm using on one videos in screen. Do we need to wrap this up? I keep thinking off? about that, man. It's do we so need, funny. Do we need to wrap this oh, up? Oh, man. Okay. So, I'm going to try here. Says, I have three videos I'm using on one videos. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. Dee, do you want to carry this for a second so we no. don't have a bunch of silence here uh, in the stream while no. I'm cracking up? No. All right. Here we go. We're going to try it again, guys. All right. So I have three videos that I'm uh, using on one uh, end screen. How can I easily tell which video has a better response from viewers when they watch it from the end screen? How can I tell which one is getting clicked on uh, with a better CTR and which one has a better average uh, view duration? So with some of those, like you're not going to be able to tell some of that um, just because they do limit some of that information, you know, directly for the end screens. But you can see your overall end screen click through rate so that you can see like, hey, are people clicking something? But then from there, at the time of publish, you can go and look in like your real time stats and you can see traffic moving. Same exact thing for like your pinned comments for YouTube cards, stuff like that. So if you have a lot of activity at the time of publish, then you can actually see some people going over there and you can actually watch people you know start to interact with that content um, but in terms of attributing like okay somebody clicked on this end screen and they watched it for you know this amount of time i mean technically you can see the amount of time that people do click as an end screen traffic source so you can see that kind of thing um so you can yeah you can actually uh uh see that but in terms of getting like really granular with that um, in terms of like, okay, where exactly did they drop off and stuff like that? You're not going to be able to see that, but you are going to be able to see um, a percentage. God, that was so funny, D. I didn't know if I was going to make it through that. Um, actually, I, you know, when you hit those times and then you're like borderline hysterical, yeah. And and for whatever reason, you just keep wanting to laugh. Mm. Yeah, that's kind of where I was at. I was right on that line. That was great. So, um, Ty's Hot Mess History. Thank super you for the super chat. Says that they have an equestrian. Uh, they have an equestrian. <laughs> it's a nice. Horse. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Got it. Love it. Oh man, trying to trying to throw me off the rails there. Throw me yeah. off the saddle. Throw you off right? the saddle. So uh see so yeah, the channel name here is Chair Yoga with Barbara. Um, they upload one time per week or more. Um, they do accessible fitness content. The goal of the channel is to reach seniors and beginners across the world and to get monetized. The question is, in YouTube Studio Analytics, there's a little graduation cap in the graph now. It says experimental when you put the cursor over it. I haven't seen that before. What's that about? Um, what that's about is they give you information, right? So it's like an educational thing. Like, okay, here, you know, this is, you know, information that we're trying to give you. So when you are, uh, you know, when you see those types of things, look at them, um, just hover over it, and then, you know, it'll pop up information for you so um, those have actually been around for a decent amount of time now but it might be something that you know that that you are just running into uh you know currently oh man you're right over there yep one step is the uh, next question here they upload every other day um the type of channel is fighting games the goal of the channel is to turn my skills and knowledge into a fun and profitable career and the question is happy new year I recently crossed thirty thousand subscribers and some thanks are in order to you and your brother for helping me cross this milestone high five and fist bump to you and uh, let's see here. It says, my question for the day is, when uploading shorts on an everyday basis, is there uh, a thing as too many? And if so, 
what is that number? How many shorts would you recommend uploading if you had the capacity to upload multiple per day? Um, any and all advice regarding shorts is appreciated. Thanks again. I'm looking forward to 2024. So the very first thing, um, and I'll get to the detail here in a second, but the very first thing that I would be very mindful of is sustainability. So sometimes people will go really hard on something and they will just not be able to keep it up. So because of that, step number one would be to look at it through, okay, if I start publishing a lot of shorts on this channel on a regular basis, this, like how long am I going to be able to keep this up? If I start publishing like, you know, three or four shorts a day, how long am I going to be able to keep this up? And if you're like, Hey, I got a system worked out and I can, you know, publish like three or four shorts a day, then yeah. If you have a shorts based channel and you want to publish those, you know, three or four shorts a day. Um, absolutely. You are, uh, you are good to go there. Got a super chat. Super, chat. Got a super sticker. Lil Minsky. Thank super you for chat. the super sticker there. Super I appreciate sticker. it. Missed it. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. And it's the first super sticker on a live stream. Mm. For well, that's right. First super sticker 2024. Yep. That was it. Thanks. So, so next much. up, we've got uh Stella Wembley. Stella Wembley does music and entertainment content. The goal of the channel. Man, that horse thing keeps crack creeping back in. Yeah, the goal no. of the channel are you um, are you stable now? Is I want to uh, says I want to earn uh, with YouTube selling my merch uh, there keep making videos like live music performances music releases music videos podcast interviews um, but also share about my opinion doing talks I also want people to find my website so lead traffic to my website question I'm a musician started on videos about topic different topics on YouTube last video went viral how can I make another video viral video or keep that video viral new subs are different from my old subs so a couple things one and I think D might be looking at your channel but one is that you need to make sure that whatever it is that you're publishing next is going to be a good fit for the people that are enjoying that viral video Two, you need to analyze the heck out of that viral video mm -hmm. and you need to start thinking about why you think people responded in the way that they did so look at what you did with your thumbnail and you're going to have the data behind it right you're going to have that but you also want to start thinking like okay if i go to my analytics and i go to my traffic sources for this video <laughs> and i see that i got a lot of this traffic from youtube's homepage. then why do i think people responded so well from the home page or i got a lot of you know traffic from suggested videos why do i think this did so well in suggested like why do i think that it got those responses and if, when it comes to suggested like did, did you um you know end up in somebody's next up is that why you know you got all that traffic from like another viral video that kind of stuff but you want to identify like what happened and um, and you want to start thinking to yourself like why do you think that people responded in the way that they did and then you also want to look at the structure of your video and you want to look at exactly what you did how you opened that video what the video was about um, like once you got through your hook what did you do next what did you do next what did you do next and try to replicate that same structure because you hit the thing for that audience that you are you know trying to reach and you want to you know try to replicate structurally um whatever value it is that they got out of that video and how they got that value so that you can try to replicate that other things to look for is was that particular video a super broad audience video um or was it a little dialed into you know like a very you know specific niche i'm going to guess it was a much more you know broad audience video um so you want to also be thinking about those types of things as well and then as you the structure you want to try to keep that the same but in terms of the reasons that you think people clicked you just want to try to replicate that um through the new content that you're publishing so if you're like okay um this is you know the the promise of this video this is how i package this video and this is the promise of it so because of that people responded to this at a high rate what was i focused on in this thumbnail um you know what what, what was the structure of my title um was there anything that i put in this uh you know title that i would be able to replicate structurally you know those types of things to see if you can repeat things in that way um was this particular video about like a theme of some kind that i might be able to carry on so for example let's say because you were knowing music related stuff so like, was it about, you know, a specific uh, type of music? Was it about a particular, you know, artist or genre, you know, of, of music? And you wanna make sure that you're just following that lead. Because one thing that's awesome with YouTube is the algorithm follows the audience, you found the audience, right? So now you just have to figure out why you think that they responded in the way that you that they did and then you test the theories that you come up with against new content that you publish um trying to you know have something similar happen again but again look at the structure look at how it is that you started the video what exactly did you say or show when they were coming into the video and analyze it second by second or five seconds by five seconds to see you know exactly what it is that you did and try to replicate it structurally there you go straight all right from, straight from the horse's mouth yep love it so, uh, D, will you well, care this for a second? I yep. need to step away for one second. Okay. 
So now he's out of the picture. I'm going to take some questions out of the chat and I'm going to leave the form from him. So if you have a question, go ahead and drop it in the chat right now. Just start it with a Q so I can identify it as a question. You're going to go, you're going to go in there and snort, snort it up. (laughs) Just do some jumping jacks, wake up a little bit. That's right. Drop a Q in there. All right. Now that he's gone, let's talk about some real stuff. Straight from the horse's mouth. You got it. All right. Let's see here. What is going on? Wait for some of these questions to start rolling in here. Um, since there is a bit of a delay, I will try to go over to the form here. Uh, okay. So this question is from Art YRV Glass Studio. It's an educational channel. The goal of the channel is to teach the craft of stained glass. And the question is, I'm trying to assemble a loyal audience. We do a live stream Q&A every Monday at 7 p.m. Our audience builds over that one hour. Would it be more beneficial to extend time? Yeah, that's something you're going to have to test to see what works for your audience. You might find, I know I do a stream with Daniel Battelle where we're actually paying it. Like when Nick and I stream, we just go live for, for the community. We don't really, we're not looking at the data, right? We're not looking at the watch time. But when I stream with Daniel Battelle over on the StreamYard channel, we have a channel review game show. Afterwards, we're looking at our retention. We're looking to see where we held people, how we lost people, so on and so forth. And we found that we have a sweet spot of around an hour and a half before people start losing interest. So it blows my mind you guys can keep people for that long. Yeah, well, <laughs> exactly. So after an hour and a half, people start to lose interest and our views start to go down and they just don't recover. So if you're cutting it off in an hour, you, you know, it could be, you could do one or two things. One, you could just, you know, short and sweet, we end it at an hour and they're looking forward to the next live stream, right? Create that, that desire, that want for them to come back to your next live stream. Or you could extend it a little bit longer to try to find that sweet spot to where right before people start to trail off, like for us, it's an hour and a half. We try to nail it at an hour and a half. So I would say recommend, you know, experiment with both to see which one works out best for you. Love it. Next and up. I'll take this one out of the chat because I okay. had my finger on it yep. and I told yep. them I would answer some questions okay. out of the chat. Um, from Paranoid's Art Room says, what do people use for editing videos on iPads? That's a great question. The, when it comes to editing on an iPad, if you want to pay for something, I think LumaFusion is, is fantastic, but it is more on the high end in terms of the features that it has. It can be a little bit difficult in terms of the learning curve. Uh, you also have DaVinci Resolve, which has a pretty good learning curve. But I would say go with either CapCut, which is free, or I don't know if Video, Video Leap is, I use Video Leap a lot on my phone with CapCut, depending on what I need to do. I don't I know if it's available on an, on an uh, iPad. It I think is, but I don't so. know if it's free anymore. Uh-huh. I know they kind of changed that whole free model. But I, I would say try CapCut first. Mm. Um, I, 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 I keep CapCut and I keep Video Leap on my phone. They both do different things. I just don't know Video Leap is 100% free anymore. Mm. I know they were, and then they changed it, and I don't know if they went back to that model or not. But CapCut, uh, do that for sure. All right. Next up, we've got um, RDRV Glass Studio. Um, they do educational content. The goal of the channel is to teach the craft of stained glass. And the question is, I'm trying to assemble a loyal audience. I, I just did that one. Oh, you did? Yep. Okay, okay, okay. Sorry. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. Just got test it. it out between the time. Next up, we got Work in Progress. Work in Progress. Uh, they do book reviews. The goal of the channel is to create a community. Um, the question is, do you have a strategy for using the AB thumbnails? Um, should I make completely different thumbnails or just make subtle changes to each one? Make different thumbnails. So, um, yes, you can experiment with like colors, things like that. Also keep in mind that you can do multiple AB tests or ABC tests, you know, for YouTube. So you can do all of the above, but when it comes to trying to, you know, make the biggest impact, usually it's a different thumbnail. It's going to make the impact. So, you know, color changes, things like that, they can make a difference, but the big wins are usually when you completely change something up. So because of that, I would try like different types of thumbnails. So one of the things that I do is I'll have a thumbnail that will be kind of, you know, like normal for me where it's like my face in there and then I'll say whatever over on the side and then I'll do like a graphical version and then I'll do something that's completely different. Um, that's what I'm doing with mine. Um, so I recommend that you do the same to where you have, you know, like, okay, these are kind of like how I do my branded thumbnails or where people can kind of recognize this. Um, and then have something that is just wildly different from everything else that you do, and then have something that's kind of, you know, like a hybrid, you know, um, of the two. Uh, Next up on the list, we got the last gate jumper. 
Last Gate Jumper um, uploads when they have time. They do review content. The goal is to make a living on YouTube. And the question is, 95% of my subscribers are from shorts. Does this mean that I need to rethink the way that I do my eight to 10 minute videos? No, it just means that people are subscribing at a higher rate on YouTube shorts, which is which is pretty common. Um, so if you are not getting people to subscribe to your eight to 10 minute videos, then um, of course, you know, scale is going to help, but not always. But one thing that can, one thing that can help, and get some people together, are some people are okay with this, other people are not, is to uh, ask people to subscribe. I don't know if you're doing this or not, but ask people to subscribe in your videos, try to do it in a place that's non-interruptive. Um, and the reason for that is because people do respond to that. And it's not that they respond because you're commanding them to subscribe, they respond because if people are enjoying your content and they're, they're, you know, they're watching it and they're getting value from what it is that they're doing, or you're doing, those people are not thinking about like, oh, I gotta make sure I subscribe, I gotta make sure I do this, I gotta make sure I do that. They're just sitting back enjoying the content, right? So because of that, when you're like, oh, hey, by the way, if you wanna see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe. Or, you know, if you have this very specific value, make sure to subscribe, that kind of stuff. It just reminds people like, oh yeah, you know, yeah, I do, I am enjoying this, let me subscribe. So it's just a, more of a reminder than anything. But when it comes to that, you can do it in an interruptive way, which is something that I don't recommend because when you do it in an interruptive way, um, you just have to be very specific and very succinct and you have to kind of build the value around you know what the viewers want. My next video has an interruptive version, so you can check that out for what I mean. But um, but what you, what a better approach to this, unless you are, unless you're paying very close attention to exactly how you're saying things, how you're framing things and like what you're gonna land on, um, then in that case, it's usually best to do it in a non-interruptive way. So especially when you're just trying to get your audience retention up and trying to like learn how to make better videos and stuff. So one thing that you can do is while you're in between something. So let's say um, while you're doing one of your reviews, while you're reviewing something, you can be talking about something and then while you're opening up a part of it or you know moving something in the thing that you're reviewing, then you can mention it there. So without it being like a whole, I'm gonna stop this video and, and invite you to subscribe instead, just while you're doing that thing, you can say, oh, by the way, you know, if you're enjoying this so far, make sure to subscribe. And by doing that, some people will subscribe to the channel just from you reminding them to subscribe. So um, so I would start working on that. Um, and then when you can spread that type of awareness, you can also do it with graphics um, in your videos as well, but the verbal version seems to work the best, but even those little nuanced graphics, those types of things can help as well. Um, so definitely make sure that you start you know, doing those types of things. Some people are weird about it. Some people are gonna tell you not to ask people to subscribe in your videos. And the reason they tell you that is because a lot of people will do it in an interruptive way and they'll do it in a way that doesn't really make sense. Um, so because of that, I recommend that you do it, but just try to do it in a non-interruptive way to where it doesn't have to fully stop your content in order for you to ask for that subscribe. Next. Next, we've got uh, Jabari's fitness channel. I was looking at this channel where you were talking. Jabari's? Yeah. Okay, so, what do you got? Okay, so the question is, well, first of all, the, the goal is to eventually turn YouTube into a business, start a gym, and get enough money to get a degree in kinesiology and business administration. Question is, how can I get more people to watch my videos to subscribe? Also, how can I stand out in YouTube for my niche? Are my thumbnails good for my niche? Okay, so we're not doing channel reviews. I'm not gonna pull up your channel, but because I was looking at your channel and you're a, you're a young man who's hustling and, and, and putting in the work, I'm just gonna give you just a couple of pointers here. Um, okay, you ha you're, you're building your whole channel around fitness for, for beginners and teenagers. You're a teenager yourself, it looks like. You're a young man. So I'm gonna tell you two things. Number one, you've got that in your channel art but get rid of the road to 10, 10K subs. Nobody cares about your subscribers on that. Focus on- That's about you, not about them. That's about, exactly, make it about them. Number two, none of your videos, your thumbnails and your titles don't say anything about trying to reach teenagers. You're just doing standard fitness videos and you're competing with every fitness channel on the internet. Hmm. So if you're trying to reach teenagers specifically, then you need to package your entire, you know, your thumbnail and your title so it speaks to teenagers. And number three, just another tip here, get the best pictures of you humanly possible that show you your, your physique in the best manner. Learn about lighting, how the lighting can make your muscles look a little bit different based on how you're posed. So get better pictures. They're gonna stand out better and give you more authority as someone who's uh, focusing on fitness. That's my advice. 
And really quick, um, Tim Techwiz uh, says, who's a channel member here, so I'm just going to go ahead and quickly answer this one. says, um, why YouTube suddenly stopped recommending my videos? So what happens is people stop responding to the videos. Yeah. And, you know, like a lot of people will, will look at YouTube and they'll look at YouTube's algorithm as the culprit for, you know, like why they aren't getting views or why something stopped getting views and stuff like that. But in reality, what happens is the system responds to how the viewers of the platform respond. So if more people are having a satisfactory experience with the content, then YouTube will keep showing it to other people that are using YouTube like those people are and watching similar content and so on. But as soon as you cross that threshold of, okay, we're showing it to these people here, but they're not responding to it. Then in that case, then, you know, it's going to lower the impressions that you're getting on that video because people are no longer responding at a competitive rate. So what's going to happen then is instead of uh, recommending your video, it's going to recommend videos that are more competitive that people are responding to, that they are being more satisfied with, that they are clicking on more, watching more, sharing, you know, those types of, those types of things. Next, we've got, uh, let's see here, 37. All right, cruising right along. Uh, Grampy's Garage uploads every other day. The type of channels, automotive and equipment, how to. The goal of the channel is to give my community good quality information. The question is, I have 29 subscribers with 15 videos. Whoop, whoop. Um, what is the one thing that you would recommend that I focus on as a new content creator? Question. Great question. Focus on your skill development of learning how to do all of the things required as a content creator and focus on your understanding of your audience. Those two things um, will get you further than pretty much anything else that you could do. So when you focus on your skills, it's gonna help you be able to create better content. When you focus on your understanding of your audience and what they respond to, it's going to help you serve them better. When you do those two, when you combine those two things, it, it can make your uh, channel a really good channel that people will keep coming back to um, and that you'll be able to grow over time. D, any additional things on that? Yeah, start paying attention to patterns. Now you don't have a lot of videos, but as you start to build out your content library, start paying attention to the type of content that works. When you're like, hey, every time I make this type of video, they really like when I'm doing something about how to fix cars, for example. Like whenever I upload a car repair video, it gets a lot more views than when I'm doing something that's not a car repair video. So just look for those patterns and then lean into them when they happen. And that's part of understanding what your audience is actually there yeah. for. Angling by uh, Lawi Mab Mabui. I hope I'm saying that correctly. I apologize um, if not. But the type of channel is fishing sessions for my kids and anyone with an interest. The goal of the channel is to get my content out to more people who like fishing. And the question is, should I update older thumbnails to my new thumbnail style? So when it comes to your thumbnail style, um, a lot of people will get really focused on like, hey, I have to change everything to make sure that yeah. it matches like my branding. But what I recommend is that you that you change thumbnails for the sake of being effective, not necessarily for the sake of just matching other thumbnails. Okay. Because what can happen is you can change something for the sake of the branding that you're currently using and it can end up making a thumbnail. It's just people don't respond to as well. So because of that, if people are responding to you know your packaging on one video, you know? Just let them keep responding to that packaging or test different thumbnails using TubeBuddy until you get the uh, uh, YouTube's ABC testing tool um, and just keep you know um, testing different thumbnails to see what people respond to better that way. Um, but uh, when it comes to like old videos, really, I would go in, I would look at the audience retention on those videos, see if people are enjoying those videos when they come into it in terms of like they're watching, you know, for a decent amount of time. If they are, then in that case, maybe updating those would, you know, make sense. Also look to see if they're even getting impressions anymore. If they're not even getting impressions over like a 90 day period, then it's not even going to matter, you know, what you do to those. Um, outside of, you know, if you update the title and thumbnail uh, or title, thumbnail and description, then maybe, you know, YouTube will try to show it to some other people. But at the end of the day, you know, if people didn't respond to that video in the past, it's probably going to happen the same so because of that if you do have videos to where you did have really good audience retention in those videos the people that did interact with them you know they did have engagement you know those types of things then in that particular case updating that packaging could just kind of refresh it and cause people to respond differently if it's still getting uh, impressions but i would not do it just for the sake of the branding i would do it because the videos are underperforming right that's that's why you want to make changes like that yeah what doug said here is spot on the juice may not be worth the squeeze yeah yeah, sometimes like uh, uh, sometimes the things that you work on, and I, I mentioned this actually, one of the first things that I mentioned in that video that's going out on Monday mm. is I mentioned that there's like so many things that you can do that are busy work 
that will just keep you doing something, but it's not really going to do anything to like really help. Right. 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 So, you know, you might, you know, kind of hit something here and there, but like, you know, a lot of that stuff, it's just busy work that, you know, just kind of keeps you doing something to where really you might be better off watching a video from like Hayden Hellier Smith on like how to edit videos. Right. Right. You might want to spend your time, you know, doing something like that compared to going in and updating all your thumbnails. I'm grabbing this one out of the chat really quick yep, from Save Trip, who's over on X. It says, what networking events do you recommend uh, to go to as a YouTube creator with about 100,000 subscribers to collab and learn more? Vid Summit. Vid Summit. Go to Vid Summit. So if, if you're a content creator. That's and, in October. Yeah, it's in October, October in Dallas, Texas. If you are a content creator um, and you are somebody that you know has a thriving channel or you have a channel that you're wanting to thrive and you're like, hey, I'm doing everything I can to like get this thing you know going and I just wanna understand everything that I possibly can about YouTube, go to vid summit yep. i cannot endorse vid September. summit enough christina smallhorn's in the house too um you know also saying vid summit shark scrapper you know vid summit september like, this year hold on yeah so like um did it move to september yeah, I could just let me know. Uh, I'm double checking right now. But yeah, like uh, Vid Summit in Dallas, Texas. Um, but we got a while until it happens. So if it's September yeah, or October, wow. it September is September 3rd. Okay, okay. Holy nice. cow, I got moved again. Nice. Yeah, that's cool. September that's cool. 3rd actually, through 5th. Yeah, I actually like that. That's good. So um, so yeah, so uh, Vid Summit. Yeah, so Chantel just dropped a chat uh, or just dropped a link to Vid Summit in here. Yeah, you want to go to Vid wow, Summit. September. Like if you're a content creator, vid summit is the conference that you want to go to um so yeah make sure that, that you go to vid summit is the answer to that question wow that's wild uh -huh. september the beginning yeah of september. there's another conference happening if you're in the uk um there's another conference happening called tube fest that i'm going to be speaking at in the uk that ha that's happening in may uh, if you go to tubefest.live you'll see that one and then if you go to vidsummit.com you'll see the one that's happening in uh september but yeah, like, uh, yeah, Vid Summit is, is the so conference then, for content creators. I wonder then, is, is it going to be warmer in September in Texas? Or it's in, it's in Dallas or Houston? Yes, in, it's in Dallas. It's in Dallas. Yeah. So is the weather... It's a little bit outside of Dallas. Is, yeah. is it warmer or I have no idea. I have no September? idea what the, what the weather's like uh, at that time. I'm not sure. Hey, Matt. So, uh, so are you going to make it this year? Probably. Yep. Probably. I, I will be going back to Mexico at the end of this year, so it's going to depend on when I go to Mexico. Yep. So I'm going to say yep, I'll be there. probably. Yep. Uh, if I don't go this year, it's not because I don't want to. It's just because I like, might be getting ready to go, packing to go to Mexico. But yeah. Probably. So um, Poonjock reacts. Uh, they upload when they have time. It's a reaction channel. The goal of the channel is reacting to funny stuff mainly, but can go to movie trailers eventually. The question is, um, I want to upload reaction videos. After that, I can split them up and make them into multiple shorts. Is that re-uploading? And I only have 100 subscribers. Ooh. So you can um, repurpose your content into shorts by by basically reformatting that content into shorter uh, videos. It's warmer in September. So for that, I use a service called Open clip so you might want to give them a shot um, if you go to opusclip.com or i got a i think i have a link to opus clip down in the description as well but they're great for that sort of thing and they make it they do it like really quickly um, they use ai to basically figure out what's going on in the video and then it will uh, basically suggest shorts you can go and edit them and say i want it to start sooner in faster in later that kind of stuff um, but yeah use opus clip for that sort of christina thing. says oppressively horribly miserably hot in september oh okay for, well, the, for, that's good for texas yeah inspiring yeah, yeah. That, yeah. i just dialed, good thing it's indoors i just dialed yeah. my enthusiasm back a little bit <laughs> <laughs> so next up we've got keep pressing keep praising is the uh, next channel here they do gospel music um, the goal of the channel is to uplift and encourage others in their walk with god and the question is i'm now trying to make a short for my longer song videos is this advisable in helping bring in more traffic to my channel so if you have long if you're making original music and you are uploading long form videos and you're trying to bring attention to it, I would make unique videos for YouTube shorts. And the reason for that is because when it comes to YouTube shorts, you have a great opportunity there to create something entertaining that leads people into your songs. And you don't have to necessarily put your entire song in there, but leading people in. So for example, ways that people are doing this, there's a guy named Connor Price. It's like a, like an, an expert at this. But basically in, in his particular case, what he does is he has like little skits that he does before his videos. Or he'll tell a story about like, hey, this happened, this happened, and it led us to making this song. Um, like those types of things to where you actually lead people into it instead of it just starting and it's just a song playing. Um, so I would experiment with that uh, type of thing and making unique content um in youtube shorts to bring attention to your music love it super chat 
So next up, Super uh, we've got uh, Whole, Whole Southern Cooks. Yep, Whole Southern Cooks says, I'm a new uh, small culinary channel who's had a few receipts taken uh, without credit from big channels. All oh, recipes taken uh, without credit from big channels. How can I handle this? Um, so if they take your recipes. Welcome to YouTube. Yeah, if they take your recipes, um, there's not really, uh, you know, much really that I think you can do with that outside of it if it's like printed. Like if it was a book or something like that, then you might be able to, I, you know, issue some type of copyright related thing on that. Here's but what I'm, I would do. I'm not sure how that how that would work as I, a as a recipe if it's a common recipe. Like I if would, it's something you made from scratch and nobody else had that recipe before you made it, there might be something you can do there. Um, I would I would reach out to them as professionally and as kindly as humanly possible. Try to get some credit or something. Yeah, yeah. And I would just yeah. I would I, and I wouldn't approach and, and I see a lot of new creators getting really upset when stuff like this happens yeah. and they take videos i would reach out and say this and say i'm really honored that you found my recipe uh useful for your channel uh i would really appreciate it if you could credit me in your description yep thank you so much right right just kill them with kindness and try to reach them through various ways you know go to their about me page try to find their email address and just be super polite and thank them for you know noticing and maybe they can credit you or link out to your channel in their description. Yep. Maybe they will, maybe they won't, but unfortunately that's kind of the position that you're in. Right. You know, try to build some bridges instead of burn them. Burning them, yeah. Yeah. That's what that's how I would approach it. Yep. Because you never know. You might reach out to one of those channels and they might say, Man, I hey, love Hey, why don't we just do a collaboration? Yeah. They yeah. might say, you know what? I love all of your recipes. Uh, we should do a collaboration together. Right. Like you just never know mm -hmm. the doors that are gonna open unless you not, you knock on them. Yep. Um, so here we did keep pressing and praising already. So next up we've got GTF Outdoors. Um, the type of channels metal detecting and other outdoor pursuits. The goal of the channel is to grow a channel and share the hobby. And the question is, is it important to stay in your lane with content? I mainly post metal detecting videos. However, I wish I had other outdoor related material such as fishing and possibly even product reviews related to both. My detecting videos are getting the most views currently. Should I focus myself to what is getting the love and not be afraid to experiment while my channel is relatively small, 400 plus subs and growing? Thanks in advance. So here's what I recommend is first think about what you want think about what you want from the channel think about what you're trying to accomplish with the channel which your answer here for this question was that you are trying to grow the channel and share your hobby so if you're trying to grow the channel then the best move there is to focus on the content that people are responding to because if you start putting out the other outdoor content you could make that as a pillar and be like yeah we also talk about you know these things here because they are there is a little bit of overlap there but um but but the problem that you run into when you start doing this sort of thing especially with very nuanced or niched things like metal detecting is let's say that you also started putting out um like fishing videos like you mentioned well you got to think how many people that are fishing are also doing metal detecting right and if somebody watches your fishing video and they really love your fishing video and then youtube recommends your metal detecting video because they just watched 10 of your fishing videos then in that case they're probably not going to click on that because they don't care about metal detecting so because of that the whole idea is to make your channel a resource or a destination for a certain type of viewer that likes to enjoy a certain type of content so in your case what i would do is if i have the metal detecting videos and i enjoyed metal detecting and i thought that i could build the channel around that and people are responding to that then i would build a metal detecting channel and then if i wanted to also do fishing content then i would just have a second channel where i also did the fishing content that way that gives you you know two things that you would be able to grow two hobbies that you could share with people it would require additional work because that's more editing you have to do more comments that you got to answer on another channel that you have to log into and stuff like that so it does create additional work but that would allow you to have outlets of both of those things that you enjoy or create a general outdoors channel you know over here and then have your metal detecting channel as the one you know that people are responding to that metal detecting content another thing that is really important to think about right now you have 400 subscribers on your channel so you could literally go any direction that you want to right now and it would be perfectly fine so you could also try like hey, um i really like fishing and i really like metal detecting but i don't know which path to walk down in that case you can also put fishing content there and you could see if you can make fishing content that people also enjoy and if so if you can get that to get a better response then in that case then you have to face 
another issue, which is like, okay, I've got metal detecting videos getting some views. I got fishing content getting some views. But if I want to create like a destination, then in that particular case, I should probably pick one of these. Um, and then you'll need to make that choice at that particular time. But where you're at right now, you have tons of room for experimentations to play or for experimentation to play around and um, and see what it is that you know that 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 you can create that your viewers will respond to uh, the best. And on that note. I want to thank everybody for hanging out in the stream today. Um, I want to uh, first welcome again everybody to 2024. You know, I wish everybody the best um, on your YouTube channels. Keep in mind that, you know, as we start this new year, that, you know, the, the things that you need to focus on are, you know, just building your skills, building your understanding of the platform and your audience so that you can, you know, put out content that people love. And it's also important to remember that you are in a learning curve. You know, we all are. We're constantly learning because these platforms are constantly changing. So, you know, you're in a learning curve. But if you're just getting started, you're at the very beginning of that learning curve if you've never done something like this before. So even though it can be frustrating, even though you can think that you're doing everything that you know how to do, which could be true, there's it like if you're not getting the results that you want, it simply means that you need to learn how to do additional things, right? So because of that, embrace the learning curve, embrace where you're at, and just focus on building up your skills and that understanding of that audience that you're trying to reach, and you'll get there. Okay. Um, D, awesome. Yeah, and I just want to say if we didn't get to your question, we answered the questions first come, first serve in the yep. order that they came in. Yep. There were some questions that we didn't we get to. We got pretty to. close. We, yeah, got, we close. got really close. We couldn't get to them all. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, so thank you everybody so much for hanging out, D. Um, awesome stream. Yep, awesome. Yep, Christina, small horse. Yep. Thank you for uh, thank you for the for the laughs on uh, that one. I apologize. And um, everybody, don't have you a, ever uh, apologize for that? Right. One. Everybody have an awesome uh, rest of your week. Make sure that you check out the uh, sponsors of the show for making all of this possible. And uh, make sure that you check out all the stuff that I have down in the description. I've got all kinds of helpful you know tools and resources and stuff down there for you. If any of that solves your problems, then make sure that you check that out. And um, have an awesome rest of your week. And we'll see you next time.